Wildcats, Rob Hip has every call from the first pitch to the last strike. Now let's check in with Rob at the ballpark. And a pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back here to Pacanelli Diamond and Alumni Field on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. Weather rolling into the area, rain falling down, but we are ready. And the stage is set for the Southland Conference Baseball Championship. The winner between the McNeese Cowboys and the Bearcats of Sam Houston is off to the National Tournament, the NCAA Baseball Tournament with the Southland Conference's automatic bid. I'm Carlos Zimmerman here, your play-by-play -play man for this evening. I'm alongside my broadcast partner, Jordan Smith, who just called that thriller of a game just a few moments ago, felt like an eternity ago, between Abilene Christian and Sam Houston with the Bearcats victorious 15 to 13. Jordan, pleasure to be with you here in Hammond. A pleasure to be with you as well. Obviously, finally being able to catch our breath a little bit here. Uh, it, what a crazy game here, uh, a long game that we had here in this first one, like you said, between the Bearcats and the, uh, the, the Wildcats. Obviously a, a huge game that has a lot of implications. Bearcats pulled it out. Another one of those sneaky comebacks by the Wildcats, and yet the Bearcats once again able to hold them off and able to get to the championship game. Lance Lusk was the one that came in and shut things down in the top half of the ninth inning in that incredible thriller against Abilene Christian. And that sent the Bearcats here to this championship game. Getting three outs was what he did, and that was all that he needed to get it done. Bearcats are going to come into this ballgame, and they are going to be dealing with a well of a pitcher on the McNeese side of things in Will Dion. They're going to be throwing Kyle Backus here in this one. Here, as Kyle back as we saw him kind of like around the pen earlier on in that first game, thinking he may come in, but no, they were prepping him for this one here against the McNeese Bats. The last time he faced them, he was able to get a win against them in a 6-4 thriller to wrap up a regular season series with the Cowboys back at the Don in Huntsville. Backus was the winning pitcher in that one after that final of 6-4. Will Dion, he had his struggles against the Bearcats as he fell in a loss there, 5-4 to four in the second game of that series at, in Huntsville. So the Bearcats were able to get on him as well, and he only went six innings, gave up 11 hits, and had four earned runs to his credit. So the Bearcats know how to hit off of him. As the public address announcer announces the lineups to the crowd, we're going to step aside and we're going to take a very quick break, and we'll be back here in just a moment, 60 seconds, and we'll have the lineups, final notes, and... First pitch of the Southland Conference Baseball Championship here, live from Hammond, Louisiana here on 101.7 KSAM, powered by KSAM Sports and the Bearcats Sports Network. This is Tim Rushing with Charlie's Used Cars. As most of you have seen or know, we are being affected by the I-45 freeway expansion. I assure you we are open and ready to serve you with your next vehicle purchase. We have driveway access off the I-45 feeder road as well as easy access off of Normal Park Drive. Charlie's Used Cars has been serving the area for 48 years and offers quality pre-owned vehicles and superior customer service. I encourage you to stop by and see us at 230 I-45 South here in Huntsville or visit us online at Charlie's Used Cars. On the campus of Sam Houston State University is the historical University Hotel. It's a heartbeat away from the campus center, Bauer Stadium, the Don Sanders Baseball Stadium, and the Sam Houston Memorial Museum. Dignitaries from all walks of life have been here. Let the hotel host your special events like graduation, holiday parties, or professional gatherings. Come stay. Come visit. Come see the University Hotel at Sam Houston State University. SHSUhotel.org. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on 101.7 KSAM Digital and over the FM airwaves here in this one. We welcome you back to Hammond, Louisiana, the Pat here on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. I'm Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith as we get ready to get set for this, this Southland Conference Championship game here at the Pat this evening. They continue to introduce the rosters here to the fans in attendance. Some fan crowds, make, some Sam crowds, I should say, making the trip here. But look at that McNeese crowd over there to our left. They are up and ready to roar 
here in this one, after, especially after taking down Southeastern Louisiana 18-2 last night. As we get set here for this one, I'm going to hand it off to my broadcast partner to give you the McNeese starting lineup. Hitting in the lead off in center field will be Peyton Harden, followed by the right fielder in Clayton Raspberry. Nate Fisbeck, the three spot in the order, is the second baseman, followed by the DH and Trey Obergon. Jake Dickerson, the first baseman, in the five spot of the order. In the six hole will be the catcher and Brett Welton, followed by Julian Gonzalez in left field. He'll be in the seventh spot of the order. The eighth spot of the lineup is the shortstop and Reed Bork. And rounding out the hitting order is Cade Morris. He will play third base. And then finally, the starting pitcher, as mentioned before, is a left-handed sophomore in Will Dion. Now as they continue to introduce the Southeastern, or excuse me, the McNeese lineup here. We'll take a look at the Bearcats and how they'll line up under the direction of head coach Jay Sirianni. Batting in the leadoff spot, playing at shortstop is Anthony McKenzie, batting second. And playing in center field, as always, is Colton Kowser. Batting third, playing at first base is Jack Rogers. Batting fourth is the right fielder, Blake Facher. Batting fifth is the designated hitter, Trent Touche. Batting sixth is the left fielder, Clayton Chadwick. Batting seventh, doing the catching, is Wes Fulce. Batting eighth and playing at third base is Mason Schulten. Batting ninth and playing at second is Jackson Lofton. Kyle Backus, the left-handed hurler, he will be on the mound for the Bearcats to start off this Southland Conference Championship game between the Cowboys of McNeese out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and the Bearcats of Sam Houston right back at our home in Huntsville, Texas. Yeah, first pitch about five minutes away from now. Like you said, as they finally announce the rosters and lineups for each side, the umpires now at home plate. Getting ready. The conference championship game. My, what a road to get here for the Bearcats. You know, a little bit of a, a struggle to end the year. Obviously a good series against Nichols to end the regular season. Kind of carried that, that forward momentum into the conference tournament. I believe we're going to do the have, have the national anthem. As we honor America and those who protect it with the playing of our national anthem. Wonderful rendition of our country's national anthem one more time here from Hammond, Louisiana. We have been here since Tuesday. Wonderful host in Southeastern Louisiana University. They've been so gracious and kind to us. Make these Cowboys weren't as very gracious and kind to them last night in an 18 to two thrashing to get the Cowboys here and not have to play. A second game against Southeastern Louisiana. That game would have been at 1 o'clock, and the Bearcats would have had to play Abilene Christian at 9. Didn't cook, the cookie didn't crumble that way, so it takes us here to the conference championship. I keep wanting to say national championship. This is not the <laughs> national championship. Feels like it. Feels like it. It's, we've, we've gone a long way to get here. The Bearcats in this one, they have gone very, 
very far through this tournament. We Going into this, we, we thought we may have been gone home by Thursday. Yeah, it was something where it just, you, you, wanted, you wanted the hope of Sam Houston to get to this point, but it just seemed like that, that there was going to be struggles throughout, that there was going to be teams that they weren't going to be able to hit against, there was going to be pitching stats they weren't going to be able to hit against, and that was going to be the main issue. But the offense stepped up after that first game and they have been the main catalyst as to why we are here right now. Now, granted, that's not to discredit the pitching. The pitching has been phenomenal throughout. Granted, the last two days they've given up you know, 12 and 13 runs. However, at this point in the tournament, you don't fault the pitchers. It's just a matter of that's how it goes, and the offense is, is just going to start <coughs> nothing when it comes to day three and day four of the conference tournament. And so now you look to this championship game, it's either going one of two ways. The game we just had, where it was a 15-13 final, or neither team is going to get more than three runs. That's exactly how it's going to go. It's going to be a very fun game either way, and I'm very much looking forward to taking on McNeese to see who goes dancing into the baseball tournament. And the winner of this game gets the Southland Conference automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament, the selection show coming up, I believe, this Monday here to see what will the field look like for the regionals part of the NCAA Tournament. Will Dion, he will take to the rubber here in this one. And looking at him on the year, a 281 ERA, 9-4 and four record in 15 appearances, 14 starts, so he's only had one no decision. Complete games, he's got five of them. If you could do that tonight, that would be enough to send McNeese to the tournament. 89 and two-thirds innings of work, 70 hits given up, 33 runs given up, 28 of them earned, 16 walks, and get this, 106 strikeouts for Will Dion, arguably the best, one of the best players in all of college baseball, if not just in the Southland Conference. He's going to start things off here against Anthony McKenzie, who has had his struggles in this tournament. Had his struggles in the game that just preceded this one, not getting a hit at all. He'll need one here to start the ball game here against Will Dion. As the umpiring crew is going to get ready and tell the guys, let's get going here. Weather in the area could play a factor into potential delays later on, but we will monitor it and keep you updated on it as the night progresses. Looking out to the northeast, there's some systems out there and also to the northwest. We'll keep an eye on it Let's get this party started. as here we go two teams remain of the eight that showed up here on Tuesday the Sam Houston Bearcats and the McNeese Cowboys Sam Houston won the regular season against them sweeping them back in Huntsville they need one game to go to the Southland Conference and get the Southland Conference's bid to the NCAA tournament we are glad you're with us here this evening once again here on 1017 KSAM powered by KSAM Sports and the Bearcats Sports Network. Anthony McKenzie, he stands into the batter's box. Dion will go out of the windup, kick and deliver. And the first pitch of the ball game is a strike. And we are underway here at 618 with the first pitch here in Hammond, Louisiana. Dion out of the windup, kicks and delivers the 0-1. That one finds the zone right in there again, 0-2. Dion already looking to just attack the Bearcat hitting here in the leadoff spot here against Anthony McKenzie. As the freshman awaits the 0-2 from Dion. That one will bounce in the turf. Good waste pitch from Dion. One and two the count. We'll get the defensive alignment for McNeese for you in just a moment. A 1-2 pitch coming here from Dion. That one runs inside a bit, backing McKenzie off. Count worked back to 2-2. Two and two. McKenzie, the right-handed hitter. Sweets for the 2-2 two -two pitch. Off speed, call strike three, inner half. And there's one out. That'll bring up Colton Kowser, the sophomore from Cy Ranch High School, Cypress, Texas. He'll stand in here, has been continuously working up that average throughout this entire tournament, hovering around right now at 374 here. So he'll await the first pitch here from Will Dion. Lefty on lefty matchup. 
First pitch from Dion DeKauser is outside for a ball, 1-0. Dion going to go through his progressions here. Set here in the windup. Kicks and delivers the 1-0 to Kowser. Kowser takes it for strike one. Your umpire and crew here this evening calling balls and strikes behind the plate is Clint Fagan. Over at the first base side is Alex Ziegler. Second baseman is, second base I should say is Joe Harrison. Over at third base is Jeremy Hayes. One out. Here's the 1-1. Kowser swings and misses. One and two. And the Bearcats really coming into this game really essentially on 45 minutes rest. Having that last game go nearly four and a half hours as I just saw a lightning strike out in the distance. We'll keep on monitoring it. One, two to Kowser outside, two and two. Kowser here. Always betting in the second spot here for Jay Sirianni. Here's the two-two. Swung on and hit in the air to left center. Back on it is Harden. He can't make the play as it rolls all the way to the wall over his head. Kowser is on his horse. He is looking for three, and he's going to get three. It's a one-out triple for Colton Kowser. What a hit there from Colton Kowser. That's exactly what you expect from a player of his caliber, the Southland Conference Player of the Year, and he comes up big in the early going here for Sam Houston. Rumble of thunder out in the distance. Peyton Harden had a good beat on it, just went over his head. All the way over to the wall. For a Kowser, that's just his second triple on the season. That'll bring up Jack Rogers, who also just has one triple this season. Already a one run, one run, 90 feet away. Rogers cuts at the first pitch and fouls it away. 0 1 the count to start off here against Dion. Rodgers hitting 371 right behind Colton Gowser in the batting average. Only two players in this lineup that are batting over 300. Trent Touche nearly knocking that at 291. Same for Fulce at 297, the 01. Rodgers fouls it back, 0 2. Rodgers, waiting for some time here. Behind in the count, 0-2. McKenzie set that on strikes. Kowser, of course, on with the one-out triple. Out of the stretch, Dion delivers the 0-2. That one in there, strike three. Two out now for Blake Fetcher. So it takes any sacrifice opportunity away for the Bearcats as they're caught looking right twice right here in this top half of the first inning. Bearcats holding a streak right now of scoring in the first inning as they have done so every game since the opener against AM Corpus Christi. First pitch to Fetcher is in there, strike one. Dion still working out of the stretch. Waits, kicks and delivers the 0-1 to Fetcher. Swung on a miss, 0 2 Peyton Harden, Clayton Raspberry, and Nate Fisbeck. They're going to lead things off for McNeese. The bottom of the first inning against Kyle Backus. For Backus, potentially playing his final collegiate outing. Kowser trying to work on Dion here. Here's the 0-2 to Fetcher outside, one and two. McNeese crowd wanted the called strike three and didn't get it. Did Will Dion. Fetcher here, five home runs on the air and a 105 appearances at the plate. Will Dion's 1-2 delivery is half swung at and fouled away. Here's your defensive alignment here for McNeese tonight. Out in left field is Julian Gonzalez. In center is Peyton Harden. In right field is Clayton Raspberry. Around the horn on the infield. Over at third base is Cade Morris. Over at short is Reed Bork. At second is Nate Fisback. Over at first is Jake Dickerson. Doing the catching tonight is Brett Welton. And of course on the mound is Will Dion.
Dion out of the stretch, one, two pitch. Called strike three, and that ends the top half of the first. Will Dion strikes out the side here with three straight looking. And that'll strand Kowser over at third base. We head to the bottom of the first here. No score between the Bearcats and the Cowboys. Cowboys up to bat on the other side of this break here on 1017K, Sam and the Bearcats Sports Network. This is Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Communication is key to winning any game. Just as Sam Houston wins on the gridiron, I help you win in the real estate market. As an expert in today's competitive market, I can help you make a successful offer on a property and sell your home for top dollar. When you support this local realtor, you support an entire family and a proud Bearcat. I'm Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Visit my website at HuntsvilleTXRealEstate.com. Eat them up, cats. Advantage Specialties is your one-stop shop for business promotional needs in Huntsville. Need a logo on a shirt, hat, or other piece of clothing? Advantage Specialties provides embroidery in-house. Embroidery in-house helps make the process fast and affordable. What about promotional products, banners, signs? Advantage Specialties can help put your name on virtually anything. For custom in-house embroidery, promotional products, printing, and much more, check out AdvantageSpecialties.com. That's AdvantageSpecialties.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the first, ready to get underway here in the Southland Conference Championship game between the Bearcats of Sam Houston and the Cowboys of McNeese. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith here, live from Hammond, Louisiana, on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University at Pat Keneally Diamond at Alumni Field, a gorgeous facility here in Hammond, a gorgeous community that surrounds it on top of a gorgeous campus. As we head here into the bottom of the first, Kyle Backus, he heads to the mound here to try and slow down the bats of McNeese. He was able to get a win against them in the regular season, but things have mightily changed since then. As the Bearcats will seek to get another berth to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2017. McNeese under the direction of head coach Justin Hill, an LSU grad, former Bearcat assistant. As Peyton Harden's going to stand in here, and he will take ball one outside from Kyle Backus, and that starts the bottom of the first inning here in Hammond. A real big key for Backus today. He needs to pitch the game of his life. He needs to slow down these McNeese bats who have been riding really hot as of late, especially after last night's win, 18-2 over southeastern Louisiana. Next pitch in there for a strike, one and one. And I think for McNeese, the big thing that's going to be benefiting them is not what's on the field. It's what's in the stands is that's in there for strike two. The amount of crowd presence they have, granted, it's because they're a lot closer. They're a lot closer, so they're, they have a lot more fans that are able to travel. You know, so I think that's going to be a huge help for them in this ball game, as it has been all tournament. Back is a one-two count. Here's the pitch to Harden. That one's outside, two and two. We'll get the defensive alignment for the Bearcats for you here in just a moment. Peyton Harden at the plate, batting 328 out of the leadoff spot for Justin Hill. One home run on 26 RBIs. Back is set at the chin. Here's the 2-2. Fouled away. Again, now hitting 6.30 here in Hammond. Been here since 11 o'clock this morning. A long day for us, long day for a lot of people here that have been here for every single game in this tournament. 2-2 two -two pitch. That one on the ground, third base side. Schultz gloves it on a couple hops, throw to first is too high, and Harden reaches on an infield single. Back is telling Schultz, got to be quicker with it. And Schultz says, my, Schultz says, my bad. Yeah, and that's just a play where, unfortunately, it was just a matter of the exchange, just couldn't get a clean exchange on it and fire it over, like you said, in time. And then, of course, the first baseman uh, in Jack Rogers had to jump for it anyway, so it was an offline throw. So just an all-around mess on that play. So here's Clayton Raspberry, 11 home runs to his credit in 59 games. He started every single one. He'll take strike one here from Backus as that 89-mile-an-hour fastball falls into the zone. Harden, of course, give him credit. He's got a lot of speed over there, 15 stolen bases on the season as well. Watch for him. Backus out of his stretch, as he always does. Here's the 0-1. Fouled away by Raspberry, 0-2. Ra 
Asbury with the big red beard as we alluded that to him. I was on the call for a double header on the Bearcat Sports Network over at the university. Had his struggles against Bacchus. See if Bacchus can do it to him again. Here's the 0-2. That one swung on, hit in the air to right field. Way back at the wall and goodbye. Goodbye! Clayton Raspberry goes yard to right field and McNeese strikes first in this one, it's two nothing. That's McNeese for you. That's one reason why they were picked as one of the top two teams in the Southland Conference three, to win it this year. Actually, I believe they were picked second, but either way, the point is, that's why they were picked as one of the top two, top three teams in the, in the conference, is because this is a team who can get off to a fast start if you allow them to. And they did right there off the bat of Clayton Raspberry. Now two runs on one hit for McNeese. A season there where they go 31 and 28, Bearcats 30. And 24, they entered this tournament 26 and 24, or 26 and 23. It's the 0-1 to Fisbeck. That one runs high from Bacchus, 1-1. One one. You, you know Bacchus needs to go many innings here in this one. He needs to calm down after this one because you know why. That bullpen is very spread thin. A lot of them going to be probably coming in here on potentially one day's rest, if not that at all. Here's the 1-1 to Fisbeck. This one on the ground right back to Kyle Bacchus, too. And there is the first out here in the bottom of the first. And I'll turn things over here to clean up hitter, designated hitter Trey Obregon. Well, quickly here, your defensive alignment for the Bearcats. Out in left field, left to right in the outfield, Clayton Chadwick in left, Colton Kowser in center, right fielder is Blake Facher. So Coach Jay Sirianni is out to talk here with Kyle Backus here for a moment. Around the horn on the infield, Mason Schultz over at third, over at shortstop is Anthony McKenzie, at second is Jackson Lofton, at first is Jack Rogers, and the backstop today for Kyle Backus is his regular catcher in West Foles. So here's Obregon. Not as many games compared to the first three that he faced, that just came to the batter's box to face Bacchus. 40 games started, that's why his average is a little bit higher than normal, 331 for the junior. Out of Salisaw, Oklahoma, here's the first pitch to Obregon, that one's in there for a strike, 0 one from Bacchus. Here's the 0-1. That one outside, 1-1. One one. Bacchus, of course, started game two for the Bearcats. He's able to take down Lamar in that one in a Bear game where the Bearcats hung on 7-4 on Thursday morning. Here's the 1-1. One one. This one on the ground, third base side. Scholes gloves in a couple hops. Throw over to first. Well in time, two away. Much cleaner that time from the third baseman, Mason Schultz. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, a lot cleaner play for Schultz there, and you know, Number back to what he said. He said, my bad, I'll get it to go better next time, and he did right there, a good job for him, and now you gotta make sure that for the rest of the game you don't have a single error, because one error could completely change everything and give all the momentum to McNeese. That'll bring up Jake Dickerson, the first baseman senior for the Cowboys. Back is continuing to work out of a bent stretch. This one on the ground once again to Schultz. He'll glove it, throw on the first in time to get Dickerson in. That will end the first inning. Cowboys strike first in this one on a two-run shot from Clayton Raspberry. They lead this one 2-0 as we head to the second. Bearcats will have the 4-5 and or excuse me, the 5-6 and 7 do up when we come back here in 60 seconds on the Bearcats Sports Network. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Wiesner Hyundai to get a real deal? And Darren Wiesner's Stars and Stripes sale saved even more. How about a 2021 Hyundai Elantra Limited, 4,000 off MSRP? Get a 2021 Hyundai Kona Limited or a Tucson Limited, your choice, 5,000 off MSRP. Or a 2021 Hyundai Sonata Limited, 5,000 off MSRP. Buy for less at Wiesner Hyundai. Exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe or WiesnerHyundai.com. Check out America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty and the Hyundai Assurance Program today. 
Hey, Huntsville sports fans. This is Robert Lindemann of Hit Solutions Player Development, helping instruct the stars to shine. Hit Solutions Player Development teaches the fundamentals of baseball and softball with proven offensive and defensive strategies and techniques. We instruct and inspire each player to be the best they can be by teaching the middle side of the game. To have the confidence to bring in the game-winning hit, visit us online at hitts.com. Hit Solutions, a proud supporter of the Huntsville Hornets. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here from Pat Keneally Diamond here in gorgeous Ammon, Louisiana. Looking a little less gorgeous right now with the weather in the area. McNeese leading this one two to nothing. Bearcats are going to have the five, six, and seven due up here to tackle Will Dion. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith here on 1017 KSAM. We're glad you're with us, whether you're listening over the FM airwaves or on our digital, oh, excuse me, digital platform. The first pitch to Trent Touche is going to run high for a ball, 1-0 and to start things off for Will Dion here in the second. Here's the 1-0. Touche out in front of it, 1-1. One one. Touche coming into this one, batting 291, appeared as a pinch hitter in the last game. There's a 1-1 from Will Dion. That one runs outside and gets away from the catcher in Brett Welton. Nobody on, so it doesn't hurt anything for McNeese. 2-1 and one the count. You know, looking at Touche, bats really well when in a leadoff situation, batting 417. Needing a base knock here to try and pack the bases for the Bearcats against Will Dion. 2-1, swung on a miss, 2-2. Two and two. And time called here by the home plate umpire in Clint Fagan. 2-2 count here. Nobody out here in this top half of the second inning. Again, McNeese up 2-0. Here in the Southland Conference Championship. 2-2 to Touche. That one fouled away towards the knob of the bat. Yeah, that one right on the inside part of his hands there. He could have honestly just let that one go, and it would have been a ball. Even though he swung, I'm glad he made contact, but wasn't really much reason to swing there. McNeese crowd trying to get rowdy here. 2-2. Two -two. Swung on a missed. Strikeout number one here in the inning. Four now for Will Dion. Wow. Just blew it right by him. That'll bring up Clayton Chadwick, the freshman from Lavernia. Trying to tackle Will Dion here. And Dion was able to get through the first inning, only giving up the one hit to Colton Kowser. That was a triple. He was able to set down McKenzie, Rogers, and Fature on strikes. He sets Touche here, and he gets Chadwick swinging first pitch, 0-1. And, and something to watch for here in this one, you mentioned it, four and a half hours took the first game. That tired out this Bearcat squad. Obviously, McNeese hasn't played since last night. They are fully refreshed and ready to go. So that's something to watch for here. The pitch that bounces into Chadwick here, one and one. You gotta wonder if Jay Sirian is telling these guys, you know, wait on these pitches. See if he can get some walks and put some pressure on Dion. Because you know, if you're able to get some runs across here in the latter innings, you can try and run him out of the game and have to get into the McNeese bullpen. It's the one one. That one on the, into left field for a base hit for Clayton Chadwick. That one bobbled there by the left fielder for a moment there in left by Julian Gonzalez, but Chadwick gets on with a one out base knock. His fourth hit of the day, he had three in the game against Abilene that preceded this one. And that will bring up the catcher now in West Foles, batting 297 entering this game. Hits well with runners on at 381. Limited appearances here in the conference tournament. Of course, he was Kyle Backus' catcher back on Thursday morning. Here's the first pitch to Foles, and that runs low and outside, 1-0. Dion now with the runner on. Foles trying to put something into play here and through the gaps. There's the 1-0 from Dion. Foles swings and hits this one. That's well foul. 
Good piece of contact, runs the count to one and one. And like you said, just trying to wait for the right pitch and obviously that one just a little bit late on the swing there. Gotta make sure here that if you do make another swing, you gotta make sure it's the right swing. That's the biggest thing with Dion. Gotta make sure it's something that he's gonna regret. The one one from Dion, just fouled away one and two. Just barely found a way, just a tad, tad early on that one and a little bit underneath. Good job though either way of, or a tad above it, excuse me. Just barely getting contact, good job there of, of getting that swing, getting the contact, but now you're down one two. You gotta be smart about it. Anything close, nothing ridiculous. Out of the stretch, the one-two from Dion is low and towards the turf, two and two the count. Foles, the freshman hailing out of Sweeney. Doing the catching today, of course, for Kyle Backus and for anyone else that will come to the mound today for the Bearcats. Of course, as I said, Backus needing to go far today to help that bullpen out. The 2-2 two -two is going to have to wait a minute as Dion goes over to check on Chadwick. Bearcats have not been picked off in this tournament. They've been thrown out on the base pads, not so much picked off while in play. Dion out of the stretch, facing slightly away from the batter. Here's the 2-2. Called strike three, and that's five strikeouts for Will Dion. West Fulce looked set down looking. Four of the strikeouts for Will Dion have been looking for the Bearcats, and that'll bring up Mason Schultz with two out. This is what you expect from Will Dion. If you allow him to get ahead in the count, you pretty much already lost the about at that point. You're then at that point just hoping you can get contact on something to put in play. Five strikeouts to the first seven batters of the game. It's the first pitch to Mason Schultz. That one runs a bit inside. One and O oh from Dion. And Dion already pitching a well of the game. Five of the batters he's faced, seven of the batters he's faced so far in this game. Five of them set down on strikes. Yeah, and came in today with 106 strikeouts on the season. Here's the 1-0. Schultz swings and misses, 1-1. The inning doesn't continue here. The Bearcats have the 9-1-2 and two due up in the top half of the third. McNeese is going to have the 6-7-8 in the bottom half of this inning here in the second. One one from Dion. Outside. Two and one. Jackson Lofton, he's waiting on deck. Lofton not having the year he's wanted, batting 137 towards the bottom of the lineup for head coach Jay Sirianni. It's the freshman from League City, Texas. Clear Springs High School. Trying to get the Bearcats on the board. Pickoff attempt here again of Chadwick. He's in there standing. Dion working out of the stretch. Again, facing slightly away from the batter. Here's the 2-1. Schultz gives this a ride into center field. Harden has a beat on it, makes the catch. And that'll end the top half of the second inning. McNeese strands a runner over at first base in Clayton Chadwick, and that'll send things to the bottom half of the second inning. Played one and a half here. We'll stay up beside and take a break. We'll be back here in a moment. Cowboys up to back. Six, seven, eight, due up in a moment here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Hi, I'm Michael Murray with Murray Insurance and Financial Services. Our family agency has been representing the Huntsville and Walker County area since the 1930s. We can help you prepare for your future with your financial planning needs, along with the unexpected with life, health, long-term care, and disability insurance needs. Please give us a call at 1-800-695-LIFE. Our email is mike at murrayservices.net. Eat them up, cat. 
Hey, Huntsville sports fans. This is Robert Lundeman of Hit Solutions Realty. Hit Solutions serves the real estate needs of the Huntsville area. I would like to introduce you to the newest member of our team, Karen Denman. Hey, y'all, this is Karen Denman. As a lifelong resident of Huntsville, I am passionate about our community. Hit Solutions Realty wants to assist you with finding that piece of property that makes you feel at home. To get the ball rolling, visit us online at hittss.com. Hit Solutions, a proud supporter of the Huntsville Hornets. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here, bottom of the second, ready to get underway from Hammond, Louisiana, Pat Keneally Diamond at Alumni Field at the, on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. Six, seven, and eight are going to be due up here for the McNeese Cowboys, starting off here with the catcher in Brett Welton, the redshirt senior, hailing out of Glen Allen, Illinois. Pitcher, a player that Albacus did not see in his regular season start against the Cowboys. Again, that game ended six to four. Right now, the score here. In Ham, it is 2 nothing. Back is his first pitch at the bottom of the second is outside, inside, I should say, for a ball. 1-0 to start off here in the bottom of the second. Back is working out of the stretch, as he always does. Here's the 1-0 pitch. This one fouled away off of the leg of Weldon. 1-1 one one the count. Weldon on the year, Welton on the year, I should say. It's batting 253, just above 250, and 95 plate appearances, two home runs, 17 RBIs. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one's in there. Strike two, 79 mile an hour off speed pitch that time from Backus. Some arms already heading to the bullpen here for McNeese. Kind of odd to see. It's the one, two. This one chopped on the ground. Backus is going to have to make a tough play here. Bear hands it. Throw to first. In time, one away. That's the way you want to respond right there. If you are Sam Houston, you want to try to respond in a positive way and start off this bottom half of the second inning on the right foot. You did it right there with the ground out. And now this is your inning to control if you're Sam Houston. Here's Julian Gonzalez, the redshirt junior from Sulphur, Louisiana. Here is the first pitch. Thought about squaring around. That pitch ran high from Backus. It's 1-0 with one out here in the bottom of the second. Overcast skies lay over the land in Hammond. Rain clouds off in the distance, hoping that stays away from us. Here's the 1-0. That one is taken by Gonzalez for strike one. Backus out of the stretch, infield straight up. Here's the 1-1. One, one. This one on the ground towards the second base side. Lofton's going to take it with a glove, throw to first. Bang, bang, play over there. He kind of lobbed it, but he got the out, two away. And again, good job right there by the Bearcat defense, forcing the out there, just getting there in time. And that's what you need right now. You just need quick outs, quick outs, quick outs. Get the offense off of the field for McNeese because the more time that the Cowboy offense is on the field is the more time that something good's going to happen for them. you got to limit the amount of time they're on the field at all to limit that possibility. So here's Reed Bork. He's talking about squaring around. He'll take ball one outside. 89 mile an hour fastball that time from Backus. Bork, the Jude Redshirt Jr. out of Moss Bluff, Louisiana. Of course, McNeese. Out of Lake Charles, just to our west. Here's the 1-0 to Bork. Cut on and missed. One and one. Lake Charles might be my home for another night if we can get out there once this game is all said and done. And we'll make the last bit of the trip to Huntsville tomorrow morning. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Bork. Called strike two, outer half, 90 miles an hour from the lefty thrower in Bacchus. Backus looking for a 1-2-3 inning here on this pitch here to send things to the top half of the third. 9-1-2 and two do up for the Bearcats. And cut on a miss there by Bork. There's a strikeout for Backus, his first of the game. And it is a 1-2-3 inning for Backus on the bump. We head to the third. Going here, Easton Law, or excuse me, Jackson Lofton, Anthony McKenzie, and Colton Kowser will be due up for the Bearcats. On the other side of this 60-second break, you're listening to Bearcat Baseball on 1017 KSAM and the Bearcats Sports Network.
Whenever someone mentions their hometown, I think we all have memories that rise to the surface. Maybe it brings to mind the faces of those who made your life special. Hello, I'm Greg Smith with Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home. Special lives are important to us too. For almost 20 years, Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home has served Walker County families, and we pride ourselves on the commitment we have to caring for you and your loved one in a way that honors them the best. We're Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home because everyone deserves to be remembered. Whether it's uphill or down, Bill Fick Ford has the vehicle whatever your adventure. Needing to tow a load or just more room for the family? Either way, Bill Fick Ford has you covered with the best selection of fuel-efficient Ford SUVs and crossovers, including the 2021 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. There's also the 2021 Ford Rangers, ready for the toughest adventures on road or off. Hurry in today to Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville, or shop online at BillFickFordHuntsville.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the third, ready to get underway here from Hammond, Louisiana. 2 nothing your score. Cowboys on top after a 1-2-3 inning from Kyle Backus just moments ago. 9-1-2, and do up for the Bearcats. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith here. And I guess you can call this really a doubleheader for us here as we wrapped up the game against Abilene Christian, a 15-13 win for the Bearcats. Ooh, roughly about an hour ago from now. As Will Dion's back off for another inning of work, he'll deliver the first pitch here to Jackson Lofton. And that one falls into the turf for a ball, 1-0, and we're underway in the third. Lofton, a 137 hitter. Hits very well decently, though, when leading off an inning. Here's the 1-0. Lofton lofts this one down the right field side. That'll go foul towards the mezzanine, 1-1. One and one. I don't like that one. I'm going to have to write that one down. Yeah. You know how long I've been waiting to use that? <laughs> Hasn't really appeared much in this tournament, so I haven't much had much of an opportunity, and I just thought of it just now. To use it, at least. Here's the 1-1 from Dion. Lofton cuts on and missed it. 1-2. and two. Looking at Dion in this game. Two innings pitched, just giving up two hits. One of them being a triple to Colton Kowser. He'll be the third hitter in this inning. Five strikeouts for Dion as well. Here's the 1-2. That one fouled away. Bingo card. In the middle of the complex. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> the one time it goes there. So 0 for 1 to start? Yeah, 0 for 1. Here's the 1-2 to Lofton. Swung on and missed, but the ball is going to roll to the backstop here, and there's going to be no play over at first, so a drop third strike. It's the sixth strikeout for Dion, but Lofton reaches on the drop third strike, so nobody out. A base runner for the Bearcats as we turn back to the top of the order. Anthony McKenzie, he will stride up here. He's 0 for 1. He was struck out looking his first time to the plate back in the top half of the first. Like I said, luck, the same thing against Abilene. You need to pack the bases here as the first pitch to McKenzie is just foul tipped. And there's strike number 1. I think McKenzie was trying to get that one over the fence. Uh-huh. Definitely was. A lot of a, a hat kind of a, a swing to it as Dion and the home plate umpire share a little bit of a laugh here. But, you know, McKenzie definitely is trying to send that one to over the wall, if not at least to the gap to the wall. Try to get the runner to scoring position. That's what you need to do if you're Sam Houston right now. At minimum, get the runner in the scoring position with nobody out. Get the runner in the scoring position and, like you said, put pressure on Dion. Here's the 0-1. McKenzie fouls this one back to the screen. 0-2. That, that wasn't there. I would have caught it. It did ding off the pole, though. It so did. there's a point. Not a run. This that, is a point. I know. <laughs> We're not starting that counter, Jordan. <laughs> we may be here all night. Hoping I'm not putting that into existence. We've already been here all day. 0-2 count here on McKenzie. Nobody out. Loft in the runner over at first. Dion working out of the stretch. Kicks and delivers. McKenzie hits this one on the ground. Second base side. Could be a tough play to try and turn it. McKenzie will beat out the run, though, as he will ground into a fielder's choice. They take out Lofton over at first base, or second base, I should say. One away on the fielder's choice. Very close there from getting the double play, obviously, there. Good job beating out the throw there. But, yeah, also a great job there by the leadoff hitter in Anthony McKenzie to wait on that motion pitch. It was a good 
guess by him because most of the time their guess is at the plate. A good guess by him to wait for that motion pitch. Just could not get enough of it to get past the infield. So one out with a runner on first. That'll bring up Colton Kowser, who's got one of the two hits here against Dion. Runner in McKenzie is going as the hit and run was on, and the ball is going to roll foul. Would have been a really good play for Kowser as he would have reached easily, but I think he would love a better hitter hit than that. As the hit and run was on with McKenzie moving. Kowser, he'll stand back in here. Again, trying to work that average above 380, and he got really close in the previous game against Abilene Christian. Kowser awaits the 0-1 here from Dion. And here is the 0-1. Nope, we're going to have to wait as McKenzie gets back. Heard another clap of thunder out in the distance. Very far away, though, so no chance for it to really get into the vicinity here. As I'm watching that storm cloud, too, that was across there in center field, it's kind of moving to the east of us. We had a brief rain shower before we got going here. And not Here's the 0-1. Can Kowser fouls it away? That'll end up in the backyard, 0-2. Sophomore out of Cypress, Texas. Right around from our neck of the woods. Of course, Jordan, you and him both sharing the same alma mater in Cy Ranch. Loving it. <laughs> Mustang proud. Grew up with his brother, actually. The 0-2. That one's low, ball one. Thought the home plate umpire Fagan was going to ring up Gowser there, but he didn't. And oddly enough as well, Kowser's dad is my assistant principal wow. for pretty much most of my life. <laughs> Broadcast partner going way back with the man at the plate. Here's the one-two. Kowser swings, hits this one in the air to left field. Giving a look at it is the left fielder. This ball is going to be dropped there in left field in foul ground by Julian Gonzalez. And the at-bat's going to continue. Kowser gave it a good little ride, and luckily for him, it drops foul. Tough play, though, running to your right with your glove in your right hand to try and make that play. Especially once he started getting, because initially he was just backing up towards the foul pole, and then it seemed to kind of just break. So he had to come up a little bit, and he had to fight with the wall as well and make sure he's not running into that. So it's a very tough play, especially once you get into foul territory. With the way foul territory is set up here, is to, especially when you're contesting up against the wall. Another pickoff attempt here of Anthony McKenzie. Of course, the thing that helping that's helping McKenzie is he... He can see Dion's eyes. So if he's looking that direction, if you're getting picked off against a lefty pitcher, unless it's really darn good of a pickoff, I don't know what to tell you at that point. Here's the one-two again to Kowser. Swung on and hit in the air into the right center field gap, and that's going to get down for a base hit. This ball's going to roll all the way to the wall up against the track. As McKenzie is on his horse, the throw is going to be in to second, and the Bearcats are on the board on an RBI. He double by Colton Kowser, and he gives a little dance as it's 2-1. to one. Yeah, they've been dancing out there on second all week long there. Once they get that double, and I tell you what, that was a big hit. Once again, another big hit from Colton Kowser, and if I'm not mistaken... And that puts him halfway onto the second with a yes, triple it does. and a double. So now all he needs is a long ball, which would then make him number, number eight officially. All time in school history with 23 career home runs as a Bearcat. And then a single. And he's got a cycle in the conference title game. Wow. He's got the hardest part out of the way in the triple. Here's the first pitch to Jack Rogers. He'll take it inside for or outside for a strike 0-1. Cows are now with a triple and a double, like I said. You would think the home run would be the hardest thing, but the way Kowser swings the bat, that's definitely not the case. If anything, it may be the easiest thing for him to do. Here already in the third inning. Two to one, your score. Bearcats crack into the scoring column on their third hit of the game. Dion out of the stretch, checks the runner in Kowser twice, now thrice, and delivers the 0-1. That one's low for a ball, one and one to Jack Rogers. Rogers struck out looking his very first time up back in the top half of the first. Here's the 1-1. One, one. 
That one's outside, two and one to Jack Rogers. Rogers is average dipping now to 369, just under 370 after the strikeout his first time up. Gowser on the base pass, he's got 17 on the season, had one in the game previously. Up against Abilene Christian. Dion will check Gowser as he's bouncing there on the base paths. Here's the two, one to Rogers. That one bounces low, well smothered though, by the catcher in Brett Welton, and it's three and one on Jack. Open base over at first, Blake Fager, he's on deck. Rogers, a lefty hitter, slide open stance. Hitters count, 3-1, one away, runner at second and Kowser. Here's the 3-1. Outside, ball four. Rogers works a five-pitch walk, and that'll bring Fager to the plate with one away. So now you've got the go-ahead run on first base here, and that's what you want for Sammy. So with one out here, you need to find a way to get both runners into scoring position. Whether you get a second out or not, you need to get both of them in the scoring position to more put more pressure on Will Dion here. Right now, you got insurance at the plate, and this is the best guy you want right now in Blake Fature. Fature swings and pops this one up. This should squeak out of play, and it will down the first base side, 0-1. Getting a little bit late on that swing there, Fature, also towards the knob of the bat. Regardless, Bearcats with a productive inning getting on the board. That was one of the goals here, if you can get another good inning from Backus in the bottom half of the inning. Still only one out. Runners at second and first, Kowser and Rogers, respectively. Dion checks Kowser and delivers the 0-1. Fature swings and pops this one up. This one in foul ground down the right field side. Going to be a tough play, but making the basket catch is Jake Dickerson. And Rogers will scamper back to first, but Kowser's into third. It's runners at the corners with two out for Trent Touche. And tying run now 90 feet away. And you have the one runner already in scoring position. You advance them to third base. That's You don't want the, the out in foul territory because now it makes it a little easier for McNeese here with two outs to manage. You just need the out of first base. However, you have the runner 90 feet from him. It's a tying run for the Bearcats. Got to find a way to squeak it past the infield just to tie the ball game. Dion out of the stretch, delivers the 0-1. Shoosh, touche, way out in front of that one. If that was fair, that was well gone. 0-1 here for Touche. Seen a couple times he's done that. Where he's just out in front of the pitch, just a little bit early. Again, runners at the corners. Cows are 90 feet away. 0-1 count here on Trent Touche. Here's the 0-1. Swung on a miss, 0-2. 88 on the gun that time from Will Dion, looking for seven strikeouts. Nine, one, and two are going to be due up for McNeese in the bottom half of the third in Caden Morris, Peyton Harden, and Clayton Raspberry. Raspberry of that has already gone yard in this one. That's why McNeese holds two runs in the run column. Touche trying to get Bearcats to two. And time called by the home plate umpire in Clint Fagan. Touche trying to settle in here. Struck out swinging back in the second. Here's the 0-2. Runners go. Just fouled it away to Touche. Only runner actually was going there was Jack Rogers. Hit and run was on. O2 count, two away. Kowser, his helmet off for a moment. This time is called here by Touche at home plate. Touche playing in his home state here. Redshirt junior out of Shreveport, Louisiana. One of the backup catchers as well. Here's the O2 from Dion. Swung on and missed, and that'll end the top half of the third inning. Bearcats get on the board though. On an RBI double here by Colton Kowser. He'll give a little friendly slap there to Will Dion on his back. And they'll send things to the bottom half of the third. Cats down 2-1 to one to the McNeese Cowboys. 9-1-2, and two, two up for the Cowboys here in the bottom half of the third. We'll step aside and take a break. We'll be back here in 60 seconds here on the Bearcats Sports Network. 
breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it has to be El Gordo Taqueria. You'll experience the absolute best real Mexican food. El Gordo Taqueria has plates. Also, check out their new deck. Dine-in or carry-out now available. Delivery to you from DoorDash and Grubhub. Open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And now open Sunday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. For the absolute best authentic Mexican food in Huntsville, it's El Gordo Taqueria. Call us at 295-TACO. That's 295-8226. Try it once and you'll be hooked. El Gordo Taqueria. COVID-19 rapid testing is now available at Techspress Urgent Care in Huntsville. No symptoms are needed. Now you can get tested even faster and get your results back faster too. Not sure which test is right for you? Techspress Urgent Care is happy to help. For more details, call 936-570-2626. No appointments are needed. Walk-ins only. Techspress Urgent Care Clinic, located at 193 I-45 South. Check their website at techpressurgentcare.com and visit them on Facebook. That's Techpress Urgent Care next to Sports Clips in Huntsville. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom of the third, ready to get underway here from Hammond, Louisiana. With two to one, your score. McNeese Cowboys on top of the Bearcats of Sam Houston. Here in the Southland Conference Championship game, Carlos Zimmerman here alongside Jordan Smith. Want to welcome everybody in, tuning in, whether you be on our digital platform or the FM airwaves as Cade Morris will come to the plate. Caroline Reese tuning in tonight. Let's go Bearcats listening from Alito, Texas. Also our operations manager Steve Ricks tuning in. Go boys. Glad you're with us here tonight. Steve and Miss Linda McKenzie. Let's go Cowser. Yeah Colton. Glad you're tuning in as well. First pitch here to Cade Morris that he'll see. The redshirt junior from Alvin, Texas is missed for a ball outside by Cal Backus. 1-0 here for the nine hole hitter for the Cowboys. The one out. This one fouled back, and it's going to miss and hit the tree there behind us to the right side of St. Paul Lutheran Church here behind us. I call the tree a continuation of the roof, so. I call that too. One for two. Four more. Lightning strike out in the distance once again. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one in there, strike two. As Morris tried to hold up there, he did, but it's called for the second strike. Top of the order will be coming around here in a moment. Peyton Harden, who's one for one today, got in on an infield single and an error from Mason Schultz. Backus out of the stretch, set at the chin, delivers the one-two to Morris. Called, strike three, inner half, second strikeout for Kyle Backus, and there's one away here in the bottom of the third. It's a good way there to put him down for Kyle Backus there. Like you said, now his second strikeout of the ball game here for Backus. That's what you need from Kyle in this game. You need shutdown pitching like you saw in that at bat. You need him to manage every single pitch, one pitch at a time, and you need to have a lights out performance run to give yourself a chance. He's only given up the one hit so far. Here's the first pitch to the leadoff hitter for McNeese, Peyton Harden. It's one and oh to start it off for the redshirt sophomore out of Atascacita, Texas, just outside of the Houston area, up by Umble. Outfielder, center fielder for McNeese. He'll swing at the next pitch. This one's on the ground. Going to be a tough play here for McKenzie. Throw to first. Got him over at first to get Harden. And Harden wants to go immediately for McNeese to go to the monitors. Very close play over there. A great play by Anthony McKenzie. And we're, gonna, we're definitely going to have a review here. Harden immediately wanted to go to the monitor. Our... SID here to the right, Ben Record set out by half a step. Less than half a step. Clint Fagan was talking with Backus after that play was over. Not really sure what it was said, but afterwards Backus kind of gave him a tap with his glove. I guess there was just some kind of thing they wanted to discuss. Maybe something about the pitching, well, not sure what exactly, but either way, like you said, going to a review. On the slow-mo on the ESPN Plus side of things, and... Shows that he wins indeed out by half a step, so this should be a rather quick review. So they'll talk things over there. We're going to keep it right here for a moment here. And we're going to take the opportunity here to thank some wonderful sponsors that makes this championship broadcast possible. Charlie's Used Cars, customer satisfaction is our number one priority. Wiesner Hyundai Conra, where you buy for less. The SHS University Hotel located in the heart of the SHSU campus. Dakri BB Abbey Realty, Huntsville's real estate expert. 
Advantage Specialties is your one-stop shop for business promotional needs in Huntsville. And then Hit Solutions, they provide real estate services and coaching and player development, helping instruct the stars to shine. Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, because everybody deserves to be remembered. Bill Fick Ford, no bull, just good deals. Murray Insurance and Financial Services, an agency you can trust. Del Gordo Taqueria, try it once, and you'll be hooked in. Amen. Last but certainly not least, the Tech Press Urgent Care, quality health care, and unmatched customer service. You know, I miss El Gordo Taqueria. <laughs> Definitely going to get some food when we get back to Huntsville. Though we've been treated to some really good food here. I would tell you what, the jambalaya here at the ballpark Fantastic. has been astonishingly good. Who would have thought pulled pork and exactly. jambalaya would be so darn good as... We got about, I got, I got about, about a pack and a half here with me in case we go to any sort of delays as the home plate umpire is going to make the call. He is indeed out. Call confirmed. So two out as they get Harden on a great play, and Anthony McKenzie's efforts do not go for loss. As that's a big out number two because striding up to the plate here, who's already gone yard in this game here, is Clayton Raspberry. Now you got to make sure if your back is that you learn from that first mistake, you don't leave it over the heart of the plate in his happy zone. Because if we do, it's going to go yard as he tried to do right there. Yeah, he tried to do right there, but swung over the top of it, did the redshirt senior out of Rockwall, Texas. 0-1 count here for Bacchus, looking for another 1-2-3 inning. We can get one here, really get the Bearcats some momentum going into the top of the fourth. Here, time is 7-11. Make a gas station wish. Here's the 0-1. Called, strike two at her half. Bearcats will see the six, seven, and eight in the bottom in the top half of the fourth inning in Chadwick, Fulce, and Schultz. Back is working out of the stretch, looking for strikeout number three. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Raspberry. High, ball one. The lights are on here at Pat Keneally Diamond at Alumni Field on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. Again, a big thank you to our wonderful hosts. Been wonderful for us the entire time that we've been here since Tuesday. Backus out of the stretch again, the one, two. Ooh, just missed the spot there outside, two and two. Couldn't ring him up there. Close play though, that's for sure. Absolutely. Raspberry's home run, that was his 12th on the season. With the runner in, that was 42nd and 43rd RBIs for him. Looking for 44, Backus looking for the punch out, there it is, he got him! Called strike three, Backus has three strikeouts and it's another one, two, three, inning for KB. We'll head to the top of the fourth. Bearcats looking to tie it up. As we'll be back here in a moment. You're listening to the Southland Conference Championship here. A 101.7 KSAM and the Bearcat Sports Network. Stay with us. This is Tim Rushing with Charlie's Used Cars. As most of you have seen or know, we are being affected by the I-45 freeway expansion. I assure you we are open and ready to serve you with your next vehicle purchase. We have driveway access off the I-45 feeder road as well as easy access off of Normal Park Drive. Charlie's Used Cars has been serving the area for 48 years and offers quality pre-owned vehicles and superior customer service. I encourage you to stop by and see us at 230 I-45 South here in Huntsville or visit us online at Charlie's Used Cars. On the campus of Sam Houston State University is the historical University Hotel. It's a heartbeat away from the campus center, Bauer Stadium, the Don Sanders Baseball Stadium, and the Sam Houston Memorial Museum. Dignitaries from all walks of life have been here. Let the hotel host your special events like graduation, holiday parties, or professional gatherings. Come stay. Come visit. Come see the University Hotel at Sam Houston State University. SHSUhotel.org. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to Hammond, Louisiana on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University for the Southland Conference Baseball Championship here on 101.7 KSAM and the Bearcats Sports Network. Cowboys leading this one of McNeese 2-1 over the Bearcats of Sam Houston. And ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely astonished as we have a new pitcher into the the mound for McNeese. Yeah, I don't really understand. It's Bryce. It's Dion. Bryson Hudgens. Yeah, I don't really understand why Dion's out of the game. The only thing I could think of is if he somehow got hurt, and I don't think he would have gotten hurt at all. I didn't. There wasn't really any sign of it um, when it came to 
him potentially getting hurt or anything. So. So we got word from one of the directors here this weekend, Josh Jonas. Big thank you to him as well. He's been a wonderful host for us as well. And this final go in the Southland Conference, really the last event the Bearcats are going to be in before we move to the Western Athletic Conference. He just told us that that cell that was making a beeline here for Hammond for some weather kind of just split right around. So maybe a divine act of God has allowed us to continue <laughs> playing baseball here in Hammond, Louisiana. And speaking I'll, of which, I'll call it that. yeah, we'll call it that. As Clayton Chadwick comes to the plate, he'll swing at the first pitch here from Hudgens. He's going to have to make a good toss underhand play, and he got in there just ahead of the tag there. Good little toss there from Hudgens. One away to start things off here on one pitch for McNeese. We'll also, get, that we'll, helps us, too, yeah. with the weather splitting basically part of the season, if you will, because four and a half hour game, about 45 minutes to recover, and then this one, yeah. Granted, that would have helped a little bit. Still. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't know if I could go for another break. <laughs> Here's Wes Fulls. He'll take strike one as that one finds the zone there from Bryson Hudgens. We'll get stats for you on him here in just a moment on Bryson Hudgens. If we potentially can, our live stats kind of in a bit of a delay here. Cody Stark tuning in saying God loves the Bearcats as Fulls takes strike two. Freshman from Sweeney, he struck out looking his last time. Here's the 0-2 from Hudgens. Swung on a miss, two away. Hudgens looking for a 1-2-3 inning here out of the pen. He'll deal now with Mason Schultz. I just, the only thing that I could see with Dion not being in is... They want to limit him for the postseason, and then that doesn't make any sense. So I'm not really sure why why this is happening. I I can't I can't figure it out. Here's Mason Schultz out of the windup. Hutchins delivers the first pitch. That one's outside, one and zero. Schultz trying to get something going here for the Bearcats offensively. They got one run on three hits and an error. That error charged the Schultz. McNeese two runs on, just the one hit. Schultz takes strike one outside. Looking out to the northwest here of us. Some sun peeking out in that direction. We saw some sun earlier on in against the game in the game against Abilene Christian. Quickly went away though. Here's the one-one from Hudgens. Outside. Two and one to Schultz. It'll be the three, four, five due up for McNeese. The bottom half of the fourth. Hudgens here looking for a 1 2 3. Here's the 2 1. Swung on. Foul down the third base side. 2 and 2 the count. And the winner of this game it gets the Southland Conference's automatic bid to the NCAA Baseball Tournament. And if any team that goes deep into the tournament finds themselves in the College World Series in gorgeous Omaha, Nebraska. McNeese and Sam Houston would love to get there as that one is down low in the turf. Ball three. Here to Mason Schultz. Jackson Lofton, he waits on deck. Schultz trying to extend the inning. Out of the windup. Hudgens kicks and delivers. Swung on and missed. And that will end the top half of the fourth. Cats go one, two, three. And we head to the bottom half of the fourth inning here. From Pat Keneally Diamond at Alumni Field here in Hammond, Louisiana. We'll step aside and take a break. Bearcats and Kyle Backus looking to shut things down once again as we'll step aside for 60 seconds. We'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcats Sports Network. This is Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Communication is key to winning any game. Just as Sam Houston wins on the gridiron, I help you win in the real estate market. As an expert in today's competitive market, I can help you make a successful offer on a property and sell your home for top dollar. When you support this local realtor, you support an entire family and a proud Bearcat. I'm Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Visit my website at HuntsvilleTXRealEstate.com. Eat them up, cats. 
Advantage Specialties is your one-stop shop for business promotional needs in Huntsville. Need a logo on a shirt, hat, or other piece of clothing? Advantage Specialties provides embroidery in-house. Embroidery in-house helps make the process fast and affordable. What about promotional products, banners, signs? Advantage Specialties can help put your name on virtually anything. For custom in-house embroidery, promotional products, printing, and much more, check out AdvantageSpecialties.com. That's AdvantageSpecialties.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to the Pat here on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith as my broadcast partner here does a face full of jambalaya. A sip of water. We'll get going here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, starting things off here with the three-hole hitter in Nate Fisbeck. I feel like you're trying to call me out there. I am trying to call you out. <laughs> the first pitch from Bacchus. This one is popped up, and this one's going to squeak out of play right behind us. On a bounce. Wait. you got to be. Oh, I, I, got I, it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I think we're three. We got three now. Did we're we have three? Yeah, we're three for four. Ooh, getting close. We'll explain what that means later on. Yeah, we will. If you didn't tune into the first broadcast, here's the L1. Cut on it. Missed. There by Fisbeck 0 and 2. Bearcats trying to get another strikeout here from Kyle Backus, looking for four. Here's the 0-2. Foul tipped. And it'll keep the count at 0-2. Bacchus working out of the stretch. Infield playing straight up here. Here's the 0-2. That one runs inside there on Fisbeck, 1-2. and two. Here's the one, two, that one swung on and hit down, foul down the right field side. Good piece of hitting there from Fisbeck to spoil and it's a one, two count that remains for the redshirt senior just to the south of Huntsville. He hails out of the Woodlands, Texas. Here's the one, two, fouled away again there by Fisbeck. Bacchus trying to, trying his best here to shut things down. Another one, two offering. That one swung on and hit in the gap in right center and this one is gonna be caught though in right field by Blake Fetcher and there's one away. Just right now for Sam Houston, they just need to keep doing what they're doing and limiting this offense. For, Mc, for McNeese, they need to just do what they've done the last couple of innings. Backus is really picking a rhythm. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a groove. He's got, he's got a rhythm to him right now. He needs to keep that going and keep going to the rest of his outing. This one is popped up high on the infield. Call it everyone off is the second baseman Lofton, and there's one pitch, two out. Well, shouldn't say one pitch, but one pitch to get the batter in Trey Obregon, the designated hitter out, and now that'll hand things off here to Jake Dickerson as Bacchus is looking for yet and then another one, two, three inning. First baseman, Jake Dickerson. Dickerson, the lefty hitter here, trying to deal with Bacchus. Here's the first pitch, and Dickerson takes it outside, strike one. Bacchus trying to work quickly here. Here's the next pitch. That one runs low and outside, one and one the count. Oh, 
1-1 count here. Here's the pitch from Backus. This one on the ground. Over to the shortstop, McKenzie. He'll glove it on a couple hops. Throw it up first. High, but the bounce by Rogers there is back in time to step on first. And a 1-2-3 inning once again for Kyle Backus. Pitching the game of his life so far. Just the one hit given up, the two-run shot. Otherwise, he has set them down since. We go to the fifth here. Almost halfway home here in the Southland Conference Championship. We'll step aside for 60, and we'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcats Sports Network. Wild people driving from all over Texas to Wiesner Hyundai to get a real deal. And Darren Wiesner's Stars and Stripes sell save even more. How about a 2021 Hyundai Elantra Limited 4,000 off MSRP? Get a 2021 Hyundai Kona Limited or a Tucson Limited, your choice, 5,000 off MSRP. Or a 2021 Hyundai Sonata Limited 5,000 off MSRP. Buy for less at Wiesner Hyundai. Exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe or WiesnerHyundai.com. Check out America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty and the Hyundai Assurance Program today. Hey, Huntsville sports fans. This is Robert Lindemann of Hit Solutions Player Development, helping instruct the stars to shine. Hit Solutions Player Development teaches the fundamentals of baseball and softball with proven offensive and defensive strategies and techniques. We instruct and inspire each player to be the best they can be by teaching the mental side of the game. To have the confidence to bring in the game-winning hit, visit us online at hitts.com. Hit Solutions, a proud supporter of the Huntsville Hornets. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here. Top of the fifth, ready to get underway. Bryson Hudgens is out for another inning of work. He was able to fan two Bearcat batters just some short time ago. He was able to get two of the three that he faced. Looking to try to do the same thing here. Bearcats looking to tie this game up with one swing of the bat. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside Jordan Smith. Here in this one from Hammond, Louisiana, on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. The 9-1-2 and are due up here for the Bearcats as Jackson Lofton will stride into the batter's box to get things going here against Bryson Hudgens. Hudgens on the season, a 3.28 ERA after his first inning of work. One and three record in 46 and two thirds innings of work, 42 hits given up, 17 earned runs, 19 walks, 26 strikeouts, and just the one home run. Lofton swings at the first pitch. We're underway here in the top of the fifth, and it's a strike to start things off 0-1. Hudgens here in relief of Will Dion. Kind of an odd move there out of the McNeese side of things. Although you never know what's going on as Lofton hits this one. This is going to be trouble in right field. And it'll drop in front of Raspberry for a leadoff hit for Lofton. Two pitches and a base runner here for the Bearcats. Oh, such a good job right there of this Bearcat offense really staying on top of it and getting runners on base. That's the thing. You need to get runners on base to give yourself a chance because all you need is one swing into the gap to get runners either into scoring position or runners who are already in the scoring position to get home to tie the ball game. So good job by the Bearcats so far offensively to at least give them their chance by getting runners on base. First pitch here to Anthony McKenzie runs out high and outside. 1-0 to start things off. Still nobody out. Colton Kowser, he waits on deck. He would love to get a, up here to hit. The big opportunity. Trey Burnett turning in today. Eat him up, Cats. Back, in, back is looking good thus far. Brenda Dyer, let's go, Cats. Glad you're tuning in with us on our YouTube stream as well. Here's the 1-0 to McKenzie. He'll foul that one away down the third base side, 1-1. One one. Good catch there, my friend. Got some bags on our stuff here, on our equipment, <laughs> just in case in the event a rain shower does push its way through. But it looks like we're looking pretty good right now here in the top of the fifth inning. You can see batting from the left side here, the switch hitter. Hudgens 1-1 one, one delivery is outside of the batter's box, on the opposite batter's box. 2-1 and one the count. Hudgens working out of the stretch. He'll take a bend. Lofton over at first with a small lead. 2-1 to McKenzie. Swung on, fouled back to the net. 2-2. Two two. McKenzie trying to string some runners across here for Sam Houston and get Colton Kowser set up for something big. 
here in this top of the fifth inning. One of those turning points we've talked about. Here is we're nearing the halfway point here in the Southland Conference Baseball Championship. Pickoff attempt here of Lofton. He's back in time, sliding. Count remains two and two. And looking at McKenzie, the freshman from Houston. Second Baptist High School played under the direction of Astros legend Lance Berkman. I guess you could call him Cardinals legend too. He's had some heroics for them as well in the postseason, especially in the 2011 World Series. 2-2 to McKenzie, bounces in, full count. Let's call him a baseball legend at this point for Honestly. the big Puma. Honestly. Of course, his best years coming in an Astros uniform. Early 2000s especially. Especially. Big part of the reason why the Astros made it that 2005 World Series. So if anything McKenzie's learned from him, he could try to apply here. A switch hitter just like Berkman. Here's the 3-2. Swung on and foul. On the third base side, very close. Just missed it. Nice crowd on their feet, trying to get Hudgens here his third strikeout. McKenzie trying to pack the bases. Hudgens out of the stretch. Another payoff pitch. High, ball four. And it's two on, nobody out for Mr. Colton Kowser. And this is big right here, because you have the go ahead run on first base, especially with nobody out, to now bring up Colton Kowser, who has already had a very, very good day so far with a double and a triple, that double scoring in RBI. Right now, runner on second. You score that guy, we're tied here in the top of the fifth inning. If you go yard here, you're three, thirds, uh, three quarters of the way to the cycle, and you give the Bearcats a 4-2 lead in the Southland Conference Championship. Here's the pitch from Hudgens. Kowser swings, trying to go opposite field, and they'll foul away. That'll end up on North General Pershing Drive, and there's strike one. Clock time now, 7.31 here in Hammond. Of course, same time zone back home in Huntsville. You have to go all the way to the middle of the panhandle of Florida to head over into the eastern side of things. Again, the NCAA selection show coming up Monday. Once all the conference tournaments come to end, a lot of them winding down. We've been following the SEC tournament rather closely. Some good action on that side. Bearcats trying to get that auto bid. Same for McNeese. Here's the 0-1. Kowser, this one is on the ground to the shortstop. That'll advance the run to the third. Kowser is out over there at first base. And just like Peyton Harden did a bit ago, Kowser's wanting to ha have Jay Sirianni have them take a look at this one. So a good turn over there. For the moment, it's a 6-4-3 double play. As we all think here, especially the fan right here in front of us, do you think he is safe? So the home paid umpire and his crew are going to converge here, and they're going to take this to another replay. And this is big here, because instead of two out and a runner at third, it would be one out and runners at the corners. And that's the big thing right there because then you have the go-ahead run on the bases, not at the plate. It's a lot better to have the go-ahead run on the base paths than on the base unless you have somebody who you know is just going to go ahead and smack a home run over the right field wall and then the first pitch. It's a better option to have the go-ahead run standing at first base, especially when it's a guy like Colton Kowser who has a good amount of speed here this is who you want on first base as the go-ahead run in the conference title game. Yeah, and you have Jack Rogers right behind him as well. I think this one may take a little bit, so we're going to step aside for 30 seconds. We'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcat Sports Network. Hi, I'm Michael Murray with Murray Insurance and Financial Services. Our family agency has been representing the Huntsville and Walker County area since the 1930s. We can help you prepare for your future with your financial planning needs, along with the unexpected with life, health, long-term care, and disability insurance needs. Please give us a call at 1-800-695-LIFE. Our email is mike at murrayservices.net. Eat them up, cat. Welcome back here to Pacanelli Diamond. 
still under a view here. Cowboys leading this one two to one. Bearcats trying to change that. Here in the top half of the fifth inning, under a second video review, this one for the Bearcats this time. On a very close play over at first base, and trying to turn a 6-4-3 double play to the infield of McNeese, starting with Reed Bork over to the second baseman and Nate Fisbeck, and back to the first baseman in Dickerson. Kowser thinks, and we all think here, he is well safe. Home plate umpire and a fellow umpire is talking things over with the replay officials over back in the production truck, just behind the right field wall. Very safely behind the right field wall, not having to worry about how much about getting hit over there. Uh, keep checking our car periodically. Looks like we're still good over there on anything. <laughs> not a lot of home runs have been hit out the right field today. Absolutely. This entire week, for one thing, has been a bash party to right field, it looks like. Here come the umpires. Here's the call. Safe. So, runners at the corners, they overturn the call. And only one out. And now if you're Jack Rogers, you need to elevate the ball here. And far, and far. Deep enough for Lofton, not only for Lofton to score the run, if you can loft a long ball, it's four to two. If you're Kowser, you could be running home too on anything hitting to the gaps with his speed. As Kowser is gonna take a moment here as the McNeese crowd showing their displeasure with that call after having their call over there at first call. But of course, that was more cut and, cut and dry on that one that Peyton Harden had. This one, same thing for Kowser. Kowser will take a healthy lead out of the semicircle on the infield. And the first pitch to Jack Rogers is taken for ball one. This is the best opportunity for the Bearcats in this point of the game to get a run across. It really is the best opportunity because you've got the tying run 90 feet from home. You know Kowser has speed. All you have to do is get him in the scoring position. At worst, have a slow dribbler to the wall in the gap. You could get him to score from first. Pickoff attempt here of Kowser. He's back in time sliding. And that's exactly why they're looking at him right here, because they know that speed. And they know if he gets an opportunity to jump to second base, that's He'll take it. trouble. He'll take it. We'll take it, too. That would move runners into both scoring positions and could potentially give the Bearcats the lead on anything hit and down in the outfield. Kowser safe. Very close play. Another pickoff attempt there. Kowser kind of stuttered over there. That was very close. You got to avoid a double play here as it would end the inning and would thwart any scoring chance for the Bearcats. I'm Rodgers here. I'm looking for my fifth home run of, the se of this postseason. He'll take ball two. Wide open gaps in right and center field. Left center field as well. Some selfie gaps here, especially down the right side here because you have the first baseman in Dickerson having to hold Kowser over there at first with his speed. You can hold any runner in that kind of situation. Kowser's got to be careful here, though, not to get picked off. Here's the 2-0. 2-1 oh, now as Roger swings and misses at that one. He was swinging for the parking garage for that one. Two one count here on Rogers, one away. Runners at the corners here for the Bearcats. Tying run over at third base. Another pickoff attempt here of Kowser. He's back in plenty of time. Bearcats. Golden opportunity here to take the lead in the Southland Conference Championship. Two one. Ball three. Gutsy take by Jack Rogers. Yeah, absolutely, and that's something that I'm very shocked by, to be honest, right there on that one. Tension is cut. You can cut it here with a knife here. Three, one count. One away. Runners at the corners. Lofton and Kowser take their leads. Here's the three, one. Ball four, and we're loaded. And now it will come down to Blake Facher, who's had his struggles today. Had his struggles against Abilene Christian, and he needs to come out in a big way here, the cleanup hitter. Struck out looking back in the first. And then pop flied foul. 
back in the third as Justin Hill is going to come out to the mound here. The infield will converge us. We're going to have a pitching change here. We'll have the new pitcher for you here in just a moment as we step aside for 60 seconds. And we'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcats Sports Network. Hey, Huntsville sports fans. This is Robert Lindemann of Hit Solutions Realty. Hit Solutions serves the real estate needs of the Huntsville area. I would like to introduce you to the newest member of our team, Karen Denman. Hey, y'all. This is Karen Denman. As a lifelong resident of Huntsville, I am passionate about our community. Hit Solutions Realty wants to assist you with finding that piece of property that makes you feel at home. To get the ball rolling, visit us online at hittss.com. Hit Solutions, a proud supporter of the Huntsville Hornets. On the campus of Sam Houston State University is the historical University Hotel. It's a heartbeat away from the campus center, Bauer Stadium, the Don Sanders Baseball Stadium, and the Sam Houston Memorial Museum. Dignitaries from all walks of life have been here. Let the hotel host your special events like graduation, holiday parties, or professional gatherings. Come stay. Come visit. Come see the University Hotel at Sam Houston State University. SHSUhotel.org. Welcome back here to the pad on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University at Hammond, Louisiana. Here on our fifth day here in Hammond. And man, oh man, we did not think we would get this far. 2-1, Bear, Cat, Bearcats down right now to the Cowboys though, but they have the bases loaded with one away here. And a new pitcher into the mound here for the Cowboys. It is the right-handed thrower, number 99, and Cameron Foster. And looking at Foster, got a one and three record. He's got five saves to his credit, so he's been called, oh, excuse me, called upon in some high-pressure situations before. 38 and a third innings of work, 33 hits given up, 24 runs given up, 18 of those earned, 20 walks, 41 strikeouts, so about two strikeouts to every walk. Two doubles, two triples, a home run given up. And uh, that is good for a poor 4.23. Shouldn't, not poor, it's decent. 4.23 ERA, 1.39 whip. And with runners on, hitters hit 274 against him. Blake Fature needs to come up in a big way here. A deep fly ball would at least get this game tied. Otherwise, you're going to be relying on Trent Touche if he cannot do it. Touche, he swung a good bat as well, but so has Fature in this tournament. It's the first pitch. Fetcher fouls it back 0-1. Ooh, man, he was ready for it. Tying run at third. Go ahead run at second. An insurance run at both home plate and first. Fetcher's got four home runs here in this postseason alone. Here's the 0-1. That one runs in. 1-1. One one. I don't know why they're complaining. That was easily a ball. Folks, I apologize that I get fed up with them at this point. <laughs> Try to maintain myself. The one one from Foster. Fature swings, and that's not going to do it. That is sky high. This ball is going to stay in play, and Touche is going to have to come to the plate here as Welton makes the catch two out. And the Fature's now 0 for 3. Like you said, that's not what you want there from Fature. Have a pop up in foul territory. And the catcher making the catch, and now, like he said, Trent Touche wants to come to the plate. Number and right now, no, 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 no. Pinch hitter. There you go, pinch hitter. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Bryce Holmes. That is Bryce Holmes, who has started in the game earlier today. And had a very good outing. It's the junior from Dallardsville as they get it right over there in the PA room. From Dallardsville, coming in a big spot here. Bases loaded, best chance for the Bearcats here. First pitch from Foster is in there, strike one. Holmes needing to work a really good at bat. If he can't do that, he's got to lay something into the gaps. I don't know how much of a bigger opportunity you're going to get going forward. Here's the 0-1. Fouled it away. Ball gets away from the catcher. Throw to the plate. Well in time. No, Lofton wants to go. Lofton wants to go to the monitor. Did he get the tag in time? 
Oh boy. It was very close. The throw beat him by a mile, but Lofton with the slide may have gotten it. And here's Sirianni right here. And they're going to go to the headset. Holy smokes. It was a ball here. It was a ball here. It was a ball here on the pitch. That's why it went back. Wild pitch. Everybody starts moving. Everybody moves up a base. Obviously, you got Rogers moving to second, Kowser moving to third. Lofton coming through here and going home. And what he tried to do was kind of maneuver his body bit when the tag was being applied, because it was like you said, it was pretty much bang, bang right there at home plate. Just kind of turn his body so he'd lift his arm so he wouldn't be tagged while his lead arm was still going towards home plate. And that's what they're looking at right now. We're going to keep it here. We're going to keep it here, folks. Is this is going to be arguably one of the biggest calls of the game. Call if the plate is out. There needs to be definitive evidence to overturn the call. Third video review, second of this inning. Because we had Kowser earlier, and if it's if it, and if it they can stand with the call, it ends the inning, and we're done. Bryce Holmes would come back in the top of the sixth inning. We would go to the bottom half. If it is overturned, if the call is overturned. We have a tie ball game. Holmes is going to remain at the plate with an 0-2 count. Let's see what this home plate umpire and crew is going to decide here. I already see he's got a hand on the headset there, but they're still talking it over. This is a huge call, ladies and gentlemen. I can't stress this enough. Kowser said it was safe. The fan in front of us here said it was safe. To the right of us, they're saying it's safe. Oh, man. There has to be definitive evidence to overturn the call, and if it does, this McNeese crowd is going to be livid. Is it would tie the game. See, the tag comes on the side. Did the hand beat the tag? Remember, the call on the field isn't out. McNeese defense is already out there. Or not the defense, excuse me. Yeah, the McNeese defense is out there in case this call is overturned. So they're still taking a look at this, folks. If this is not overturned, they'll turn things over here to the towards the bottom of the order of McNeese for the bottom of the fifth for Kyle Backus as he's been on cruise control since the second inning. He's gotten one, two, three innings. He has been able to set the last 11 batters in the row. Runner is out. That, that ends the top of the fifth inning. Bearcats leave him loaded. And a golden opportunity thwarted. Bryce Holmes is going to cut him back around here in the sixth. As we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, Kyle Backus is going to come out for another inning of work, hoping to shut it down. We'll be back here in 60 seconds on the Bearcats Sports Network. Whenever someone mentions their hometown, I think we all have memories that rise to the surface. Maybe it brings to mind the faces of those who made your life special. Hello, I'm Greg Smith with Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home. Special lives are important to us too. For almost 20 years, Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home has served Walker County families, and we pride ourselves on the commitment we have to caring for you and your loved one in a way that honors them the best. We're Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home because everyone deserves to be remembered. Whether it's uphill or down, Bill Fick Ford has the vehicle whatever your adventure. Needing to tow a load or just more room for the family? Either way, Bill Fick Ford has you covered with the best selection of fuel-efficient Ford SUVs and crossovers, including the 2021 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. There's also the 2021 Ford Rangers, ready for the toughest adventures on road or off. Hurry in today to Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville, or shop online at BillFickFordHuntsville.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here. Bottom of the fifth, ready to get underway here from Hammond, Louisiana. Bottom of the fifth here. Bearcats trying to shut things down once again. So we're going to have the six, seven, and eight do up here for McNeese. Kyle Backus is, like I said, he's been on cruise control since the second. It is safe to say he's really done his job. He has done his job today. We said the pitching needed to be good, and it has been very good so far outside of the one home run given up. You take that away, it's a one nothing ball game. But the Bearcats on offense, they have 
missed a lot of opportunities as Walton fouls the first pitch back there from Bacchus, 0-1 to start the at-bat here. So we're halfway home here in the Southland Conference Championship. Yeah, right now for Sam Houston, like we said, Bacchus had to be stellar. He has been stellar so far here in this one. We need him to continue it here for Sam Houston, but either way. On a hop, played over there by Lofton. Great play backing up on that one, one away as he throws it on the first for the first out. Yeah, absolutely, backing up on that. A good job defensively there for Sam Houston by Jackson Lofton to back up to shallow right field in order to grab that quick hopper and then throw the first smart defense there by Lofton. That'll bring up Julian Gonzalez. He is 0 for 1 today, grounded to Lofton. His first time up. And he'll square around here, lay a bunt down. That's a good one. Backus is going to have to make a good play. And he does. Two out. So, three pitches, two out for Kyle Backus. You can't ask for a much better than that. That'll bring up Reed Bork to the plate. Backus is trying to work a really nice quick. And another one, two, three, bottom of the fifth. Bork today struck out his only time up. Back in the second inning. The two out. And the pitch to Bork. That one's outside, 1-0. One Backus in this game, four and two-thirds innings. One hit, two runs, one of those earned. Three strikeouts and just the one home run given up to Clayton Raspberry. Here's the 1-0. On the ground, fouled on the first base side towards the Bearcat dugout, 1-1. One one. Backus working out of the stretch. Delivers the 1-1 one -one to Reed Bork. Called strike two on the upper half of the plate. Backus here, if he can get it, right here on this pitch, it would be a seven-pitch inning, and that may have bought him a couple extra innings if he can do it. Looking for another strikeout, his fourth of the game. And the 1-2 inside, 2-2. Two two. Bearcats in the... Top half of the sixth inning would see Bryce Holmes, Clayton Chadwick, and West Falls. Bryce Holmes coming up, of course, after the called third out on Jackson Lofton, breaking for the plate to try and tie the ball game. 2-2, fouled away by Bork. And the home plate umpire needing a new set of baseballs. He'll get it from Stephen Beard. Here is a... Skies will quickly turn to dark here this evening. We're nearing the 8 o'clock hour. Here's the 2-2 again from Bacchus. Fouled away again by Bork. Bork on this season. He entered today batting 260, now 259. Three home runs, 33 RBIs to his credit, 44 hits. He's crossed the plate 36 times in his 169 appearances at the plate. McNeese centering today, 31 and 28. Bearcats, 30 and 24. Here's a 2-2 again from Bacchus. This is on the ground first base side. Rogers will glove it, and he will step on the bag himself for a three unassisted. And another one, two, oh man, a one, two, three inning for Kyle Bacchus. We go to the six, five, six, and seven do up for the Bearcats as we take a break, and we'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcats Sports Network. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it has to be El Gordo Taqueria. You'll experience the absolute best real Mexican food. El Gordo Taqueria has plates. Also, check out their new deck. Dine-in or carry-out now available. Delivery to you from DoorDash and Grubhub. Open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And now open Sunday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. For the absolute best authentic Mexican food in Huntsville, it's El Gordo Taqueria. Call us at 295-TACO. That's 295-8226. Try it once and you'll be hooked. El Gordo Taqueria. COVID-19 rapid testing is now available at Techstress Urgent Care in Huntsville. No symptoms are needed. Now you can get tested even faster and get your results back faster too. Not sure which test is right for you? Techstress Urgent Care is happy to help. For more details, call 936-570-2626. No appointments are needed. Walk-ins only. Techstress Urgent Care Clinic, located at 193 I-45 South. Check their website at techpressurgentcare.com and visit them on Facebook. That's Techpress Urgent Care next to Sports Clips in Huntsville. Welcome back here to Hammond, Louisiana, nearing the 8 o'clock hour here in Hammond as 
We got a 2-1 score. The Bearcats down to the McNeese Cowboys. 2-1. Bryce Holmes will stand in the batter's box here to start things off here in the top half of the sixth. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith. As we get ready here to go. Bryce Holmes had a home run in the 15-13 victory over Abilene Christian. If he could do one here, it would tie the ball game here against Cameron Foster. First pitch swinging is Bryce Holmes. And that is a strike to start things off 0-1. And the Bearcats had a golden opportunity in the top half of the fifth inning to try and tie this game, if not take the lead, and it was thwarted. By a called third out at home plate, Lofton trying to swim move in, and he couldn't do it. The 0-1, that one runs high that time from Cameron Foster. One and one the count. Second batter Foster will have faced here. There's the 1-1. One, one. Holmes swings, hits this one in the left field. Be a tough play out there, but calling everyone off and making the catch there in left field is Julian Gonzalez, one out here in the top half of the six. That'll turn things over to Clayton Chadwick. Number 12, left fielder Clayton Chadwick. Since that home run given up by Clayton, uh, given up by Kyle Backus against Clayton Raspberry. Kyle Backus has retired 16 straight. Unreal. 15 straight, I should say. Strike one there to Clayton Chadwick. Foster, a 4-1-2 ERA now. Now haven't worked the full inning. Here's the 0-1. That one runs low. Did he check his swing? Yes, he did. 1-1. One one. Chadwick on this season, he's... Hit no home runs, 15 RBIs. He's been able to reach base 34 times via a hit. He's also been walked 12 times as Chadwick hits this one. Fair! Down the first baseline. Chadwick is rounding first, going to second. Grabbing it is Raspberry, and Chadwick is in two second with a stand-up double. We'll do another little dance over there every time they go over there into second base. Yeah. And now the Bearcats have another opportunity to try and tie this game up. It's been the double dance every time that somebody gets on a base, at least extra bases, for Sam Houston. Every guy who's gotten a double has had that, done that little double dance where they do the twirl with their hands, kind of shake the legs a little bit. But now that's big. Time run in scoring position, especially here in the top of the sixth inning. You need this run here at this point in the ball game. Because if you don't get it now, who's to say you may have a chance to get it the rest of the game? Foles takes ball one in the turf. There from Cameron Foster. Again, anything that plugs the gaps here, double play not possible. You plug the gaps here, Chadwick's coming home and we got a tie ball game. Here's the 1-0 from Foster. Foles swings, third base side but foul. Not the play you want to do there. Luckily went foul for Foles, the catcher. One and one the count with one away. Out of the stretch, Foster works. Here's the one one to Foles. Swung on and missed, one and two. And a pitch that would have been ball two. Of course, Mason Schultz, he waits on deck. Schultz in this game, he's 0 for 2. Out of the stretch, Foster, the 1 2 to full. Swung on him, missed 2 out. 84 mile an hour off speed pitch that time, and now it'll come down to Mason Schultz. I guarantee you, Kyle Backus is in that dugout and was like, guys, please. Give me some help. 11, after a game where the Bearcats, after games that the Bearcats have had, putting up double digits, obviously that's not likely tonight. Only putting up the one run. And an RBI double by Colton Kowser. First pitch to Mason Schultz is on the ground over to the second base side. Gloving it, but bobbling it, and not going to be able to make the play is the second baseman in Nate Fisbeck. He bobbled it, Schultz reaches, and the inning continues. And here comes Jackson Lofton. Wow. Wow, indeed. That right there 
was huge for Sam Houston. Runners on the course keeps the inning alive for one thing. On what was supposed to be a routine ground out to end the top of the six. Now the inning continues. Jackson locked into the plate. All you got to do is poke it past the infield. Well, we've got a tie ball game here in Hammond, Louisiana. Lofton, he's already one for two today. Had a single his last time up to the plate here. Foster working out of the stretch. Runners at the corners. Lofton takes strike one. The 9-1-2 are going to be due up for McNeese in the bottom half of the sixth. Lofton trying to play the hero here for the Bearcats in the middle portion of this ball game. Here's the 0-1. Ball one high. Gorgeous sunset here today. Lots of pink in the sky and some blue as well as the sun will start to dip down as we near 8 o'clock. Lofton out of the righty hitter. Looking for a big hit here. The 1-1. One -one. Lofton fouls it back. Where'd it go? Made it short. Actually, I think it took a hit off the net and bounced into the seats down below us. Ah. McNeese crowd on their feet. Looking for a big strikeout here, and if they can get it, they will be rowdy. The Bearcats will have lost another opportunity to tie this game. <laughs> Lofton trying to play a big play here. Here's the one-two from Foster. Outside two and two as Schultz gets back to first in time. Gotta be smart about it here. Just choke up on the bat. And don't swing at anything that's too wild outside of what you know you will be able to make contact on. Whether it's fair or foul, just making contact in general is what you need right now. Preferably fair though. The 2-2 from Foster. Swung on and popped up. This should end the half inning. In foul ground and making the catch. It's the first baseman in Jake Dickerson. Bearcats strand him at the corners after being able to round, get some bases packed again. Al Backus gonna try and continue doing what he's doing for the last few innings. If he can do it, he can turn it to the top of the order in the top half of the seventh. We'll step aside and take a break. Cowboys still lead this one two to one here on the Bearcats Sports Network. This is Tim Rushing with Charlie's Used Cars. As most of you have seen or know, we are being affected by the I-45 freeway expansion. I assure you we are open and ready to serve you with your next vehicle purchase. We have driveway access off the I-45 feeder road as well as easy access off of Normal Park Drive. Charlie's Used Cars has been serving the area for 48 years and offers quality pre-owned vehicles and superior customer service. I encourage you to stop by and see us at 230 I-45 South here in Huntsville or visit us online at charliesusedcars.com. Com. On the campus of Sam Houston State University is the historical University Hotel. It's a heartbeat away from the campus center, Bauer Stadium, the Don Sanders Baseball Stadium, and the Sam Houston Memorial Museum. Dignitaries from all walks of life have been here. Let the hotel host your special events like graduation, holiday parties, or professional gatherings. Come stay. Come visit. Come see the University Hotel at Sam Houston State University. shsuhotel.org. Welcome back here to Pacaneely Diamond at Alumni Field on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University in Hammond, Louisiana. We're in the bottom of the sixth here. The 9-1-2 are going to be due up here for the McNeese Cowboys here against Cal Backus, who's been on a roll since the bottom of the second inning. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith. The train sounds off in the distance here to start the bottom of the sixth. Cade Morris, the Richard Jr. from Alvin, steps in. He's 0-1 after strikeout looking. One of those three strikeouts in the game for Cal Backus. You set down the last 15 Cowboys in order. This is going to be on a grounder right to Backus, and it ate him up. And Morris is going to reach what I believe is going to be scored as an error to Kyle Backus. Ball took a weird hop. It got under the glove of Backus on a play that he's made multiple times in this game already. Got to think Backus was thought he had it in the glove, but it scooted on by him. Number one, center field. Line Morris to reach, and now you got a speedster at the plate in Harden. So likely a double play opportunity not going to happen with Harden's speed. You would likely just try to get him and the lead runner. Harden's going to try and lay one down, and he fouled it back 0-1. Number 
McNeese's first base runner since the bottom of the first inning. That was Peyton Harden. That was the base runner. We love Harden here to maybe try to pop one up. Get it out here to avoid any damage. Back is working out of stretchers, the L1. Harden tried to lay another one down, but it's called strike two. So now if you're Harden, you really can't relay one down with two strikes. So Harden may be free spring in here. Schultz lining up here in the infield on anything hit his direction. Here on a potential bunt, the 0-2. Harden swings, base hit, center field. Morris is going to be holed up over there at second base. It's two on, nobody out here for McNeese. Right now for Sam Houston, you have got to find a way to limit the amount of damage he's done for the rest of the inning. No outs here. That's the biggest problem right now. This isn't like a one-out situation where you can just get the double play and end the inning. You need a triple play to end the inning in one play at Number best. Right, fielder, right now, if I'm Sam Houston, anything's hit to the left side of the infield, my first instinct is to go to third base, get rid of the runner on third, because that's insurance 90 feet from home, and I would rather get that guy out and try for first base than try to style it and go for a double play, get two outs, and have a guy sitting 90 feet from home that would add insurance. It's a lot harder to score from third, second than it is from third. Here's Clayton Raspberry. He's gone yard in this game. Thought about squaring one around there. That run will miss high, 1-0. and oh. Obviously trying to both both runners into scoring position, and then that point for back is you get the out of Raspberry, then you need to strike someone out and then get a fly ball out or another strikeout to get out of the inning without any damage done. That would be the opportune way to get it out. The hitter like Raspberry, he was struck out looking his last time. You could try and get that as well. It's a double play ball. Would A get him out of the inning if he can get Raspberry here? That one's low, though, for a ball 2-0 to Raspberry. Yeah, this is a hearkening back to the fact that the Bearcats have had a lot of opportunities offensively to bring home runs, and they just could not do it. McNeese with an opportunity here. Which is a bit ironic, considering not being able to get runs here in this game. They've left a ton of players on base has Sam Houston. In fact, you look at it, they've already left eight runners on base as that one will miss the zone to make it 3-0 and here. But yet, in the last four games, they've scored at least, what, 13 runs in every single game? Yeah. You gotta wonder what's happened. Is it the McNeese pitching or has the hitting lost all the fire that they've put out? 3-0 here on Raspberry with nobody out. Runners at second and first. Back is working out of the stretch. He delivers. This one is on the ground. First base side, but foul. Would have been good to get Raspberry out at first, and that would have been it. But back is able to get a strike. Chance here for McNeese, looking for insurance in the latter innings of this one here tonight. Score is 2-1, to one, McNeese over the Bearcats. Three one from Backus. On the ground, first base side. This is gonna be a tough turn, and the throw is not in time. Base is loaded, nobody out. Raspberry speed, he's able to leg out an infield hit. It's not what you need right now if you're Sam Houston, because now base is loaded, nobody out. You now basically, Kyle Backus now basically has to strike out two straight batters in order for then maybe a ball to be put in play, but I don't think Backus is going to get the opportunity. Like he's done after 68 pitches. There's two pitchers up in the pen for the Bearcats. Dominic Robinson is up and throwing the lefty hand, left hand thrower, and Alex Havlicek as well. I was wondering if we were going to see Robinson or Dominic or not. He pitched the he was the starter for game one of this entire tournament, and he did fairly well. He gave up a few runs, but he did fairly well, as most of the pitching has done throughout this entire tournament, especially the starters. And so for Robinson, if he does come in, 
He's got to come in, bang, bang, get two strikeouts, and force a ground ball out or a pop-up and get out of the inning with the bases still loaded. And it looks like, actually, they're going to keep Backus in. They're going to stick with Backus here and give more time for Dominic Robinson and Alex Havlicek to warm up. A big inning may be pending here for McNeese. Like you said, you need strikeouts here. Fisbeck's been able to put them in play, however. He grounded out to Fis uh, to Backus his, last time, uh, his first time up and then flew out to Fature back in the fourth. Any fly ball scores a run for McNeese with nobody out. A ground ball would score a run for McNeese, and you could try to turn two to take out the runners at second and first and get in, get back as some help and try to get out of dodge and give up the only the one run. Ace is loaded. Fisbeck takes ball one inside. Back is with runners on. Hitters hit 204 against him. Fisbeck a good hitter with bases loaded, though. Batting 500 right down the middle. The 1-0. Fouled back, 1-1. One one. And for Bacchus, he's got three strikeouts in this game. He needs two. And then something, anything. A strikeout, a pop-up, a ground out, fly out, foul out. Any way you can get it to get out of the inning and keep this a 2-1 two two one ball game. It's been this way ever since the third inning when the Bearcats got a run on an RBI double by Colton Kowser. They're going to have the top of the order in the top half of the seventh if and whenever that will happen. It's the 1-1. One, one. Swung on a miss by Fisbeck, 1-2. and two. If Bacchus can get out of this, it would definitely put a damper on McNeese and could set the Bearcats up big in the top half of the seventh. McNeese gets something here. The momentum may have swung all the way in their direction. It's the one, two. Popped up foul and out of play. This back full spoils for Bacchus there. Wondering if Bacchus here is going to try and work something in off speed. Try and get Fisbeck out in front of it or catch him looking. He's been able to do that a couple times today. Bacchus waiting to get the sign here from False. He has it. The one, two. Swung on a miss, one out. There's one. And now a ground ball and a double play gets you out of the inning. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what you need right now. If you are Sam Houston, you just need either a double play here or I would rather, if I'm the pitching staff, I would rather just go ahead, get the strikeout, keep everybody at bay, and then try to get the ground out. Because all of a sudden, if you get a bad throw from second to first, run scores, and they're running leading by two. It's McNeese. Here's Trey Obregon. He'll swing at the first pitch. Ground ball to short. McKenzie throws to first. Double play. Inning over. Kyle Backus gets out of it. And the Bearcats keep the lead. Two to one. What a turn by McKenzie on to Rodgers. And the McNeese Cowboys strand the bases loaded. And we go to the seventh. Still down by one. We'll take a break. And we'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcats Sports Network. After six innings. This is Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Communication is key to winning any game. Just as Sam Houston wins on the gridiron, I help you win in the real estate market. As an expert in today's competitive market, I can help you make a successful offer on a property and sell your home for top dollar. When you support this local realtor, you support an entire family and a proud Bearcat. I'm Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Visit my website at HuntsvilleTXRealEstate.com. Eat them up, cats. Advantage Specialties is your one-stop shop for business promotional needs in Huntsville. Need a logo on a shirt, hat, or other piece of clothing? Advantage Specialties provides embroidery in-house. Embroidery in-house helps make the process fast and affordable. What about promotional products, banners, signs? Advantage Specialties can help put your name on virtually anything. For custom in-house embroidery, promotional products, printing, and much more, check out AdvantageSpecialties.com. That's AdvantageSpecialties.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I think I've caught my breath here. Top of the seventh, ready to get underway, and the Bearcats are going to have the top of the order to try and tie this ball game here against Cameron Foster after Kyle Backus 
with the bases loaded and nobody out. He strikes out Nate Fisbeck and he gets Trey Obregon to ground into a 6-3 double play, beautifully turned by Anthony McKenzie on over to Jack Rogers to end the threat for McNeese. The Bearcats have been in those situations before and they've let it go. And this time in one of the most clutchest moments of all of this tournament, they come up huge. And now can the offense come to life here? McKenzie takes ball one high from Cameron Foster. You got the heart of the order due up here in a moment. Colton Kowser and Jack Rogers. The one to McKenzie cut on and missed one and one. He wanted to tie the game with that swing. Yeah, absolutely he did. And now that you have the opportunity, thanks to that 6-3 double play there, fantastic 6-3 double play, by the way, that started by the shortstop in McKenzie. Now you got the opportunity to go swing and fur the fences. Ball runs high there from Foster, two and one. Probably the biggest inning that McNeese has had all game since the bottom of the first. As here's the 2-1. McKenzie fouls that one away towards General Pershing. Drive 2-2. Two and two. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. Called strike three. Kenzie down looking for the second time in this game. There's one away here in the top half of the seventh. Cameron Foster's second strikeout. And now here comes Colton Kowser. Kowser has done it big all day today. The first game and the second game. Again, halfway home of the cycle right now. He needs to just get on base right now. If he goes for the long ball, perfect. Tie ball game. At worst, I say he needs a double. At worst. First pitch to Kowser, fouls it away, 0-1. Kowser today, like you said, a triple and a double to his credit. Both of those in the first with the triple, third with the double. Grounded into a fielder's choice, 6-4, his last time up. Bearcats, one run on five hits, two errors. McNeese, two runs on three hits, one error. So Kowser grounds this one over to the shortstop. Gloving it is him. And the throw to first in time to get him. Two away, good play over there. At short by Reed Bork, two out. That'll bring up Jack Rogers. Rogers now hitting just under 370. He is 0 for 1 tonight only. Struck out looking in the first. He's been walked twice since then. McNeese is going to have the 5, 6, and 7 in the bottom half of the 7th as the first pitch to Rogers runs low from Cameron Foster, 1 and 0 oh, to start off. Here just past the 8 o'clock hour here, 8, 16, your time. Rogers, one swing of the bat, ties this game. Here's the 1-0. Oh. He'll take strike one in there. Cameron Foster right now pitching in quite a gem. Two and, two, two and a third innings pitch, just the one hit given up. Two strikeouts, and that hit was a double by Clayton Chadwick. The 1-1 one -one to Rogers, Swung on on the ground. Second base side. Fisbeck gloves this one cleanly this time. Throw the first in time in the 1-2-3 inning for the McNeese Cowboys. Bearcats can't get anything together. They're still down 2-1 to one here in the championship game as we have stretch time here in Hammond, Louisiana. Bottom of the seventh coming up here in a moment. 5-6-7 and seven due up for the Cowboys when we come back here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Wiesner Hyundai to get a real deal? And Darren Wiesner's Stars and Strikes sale saved even more. How about a 2021 Hyundai Elantra Limited, 4,000 off MSRP? Get a 2021 Hyundai Kona Limited or a Tucson Limited, your choice, 5,000 off MSRP. Or a 2021 Hyundai Sonata Limited, 5,000 off MSRP. Buy for less at Wiesner Hyundai. Exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe or WiesnerHyundai.com. Check out America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty and the Hyundai Assurance Program today. Hey, Huntsville sports fans, this is Robert Lindemann of Hit Solutions Player Development, helping instruct the stars to shine. Hit Solutions Player Development teaches the fundamentals of baseball and softball with proven offensive and defensive strategies and techniques. We instruct and inspire each player to be the best they can be by teaching the middle side of the game. To have the confidence to bring in the game-winning hit, visit us online at hittss.com. Hit Solutions, a proud supporter of the Huntsville Hornets.
Stretch time continues here in Hammond, Louisiana. Bottom of the seventh, ready to get underway here. McNeese leading this one two to one over the Bearcats. Jake Dickerson will come to the plate here to continue to deal with Kyle Backus, who continues to try and shut things down against McNeese. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside Jordan Smith here on 1017 KSAM Digital and on the FM Wear Waves, powered by KSAM Sports, of course, and the Bearcat Sports Network. Dickerson at the plate, he's 0 for 2. He grounded to Schultz his first time up, and then last time up, grounded to McKenzie back in the fourth inning. Back is out for his seventh inning of work after pitching his way out of a bases loaded. Nobody out jam in the bottom of the sixth. And the first pitch here to Dickerson is on the ground. First base side. Rogers gloves it cleanly. He'll take it to the back himself for a three unassisted. One pitch. One out here for Kyle Backus. That's a good job to start that here. One pitch. One swing. One out. That's what you want. Keeps the pitch count down. Doesn't need to go to the bullpen right now. You got out of the bases loaded jam you had in the last inning. You need to not get there one first off. Two, you need to get out of this inning quick. Kind of get back to the regular average here for your pitch count and be able to force maybe another inning before you even think about going to the bullpen. Here in the first pitch in there for a strike to the catcher, Brett Welton, the redshirt senior out of Glen Ellen, Illinois. 0-1-1 here as the clock chimes 8-20. Back is trying to work another good inning here. Already got the one pitch, one out. And here's the 0-1. That one's taken for ball, one outside. Good pitch there from Backus, and Welton held up there, one and one. Welton, in his trips to the plate tonight, 0 for 2. He grounded out to Backus in the second, and then grounded out to the second baseman in Lofton, his last time up in the fifth. Here's the 1-1. One, one. This one fouled hard off of Brett Welton. There, one and two. He's going to have to walk that one off, as I think it took a piece of his ankle with him. I'm thinking that might have hit the... No, 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 no. It hit his ankle. Now, oh. something was loud over something here. Something hit the roof over there. <laughs> so we're getting into the waning hours of this one. Go figure that you have a bunch of high-powered offense in the first game and then a 2-1 ball game in the championship. What did I say? It's either going to be a 15-13 ball game or it's going to be 3-2. Right now, 2-1. Foul down the third base side. Wilton keeps the count at 1-2. and two. One of the bullpen, cat, bullpen guys will go out and get that one out of play. Welton right now, a 247 hitter, trying to get on base here against McNeese. Infield shifted around to the left just a little bit. Here's the one-two again to Welton. This one swung on, hitting the air to center. Kowser will range in, making it a few steps. He will make the catch in left center, two out. So a quick pair of outs here for Kyle Backus. That'll turn things over to Julian Gonzalez. Again, like I said, Backus has done what he's needed to do. The offense just has not backed him outside of that one run. If things go the way they've been going, it'll be the five, six, and seven due up in the top of the eighth, and if the Bearcats get anything there, it will come down to the eight, nine, and one to try and keep this season going. Stepping into the box, Julian Gonzalez. Backus working out of the stretch. First pitch, Gonzalez swings and misses 0-1. 5, 6, and 7 of the Bearcats would be Bryce Holmes, Clayton Chadwick, and Wes Foles. Chadwick, only one of those who has a hit. Ack is working out of the stretch here in his seventh inning of work. And here's the 0-1. Called strike two. Want to give a big shout out, of course, to our producer today, Nathan Williams. He has done the marathon as long as we have. He's been with us all day long. Big thank you, Nathan. We appreciate you. Love you, man. Thank you for all that you do back at the studio. Here's the 0-2 to Gonzalez. That one outside. Good pitch there from Bacchus. One and two. Here in the one, two to Gonzalez. This one on the ground, third base side. Schultz gloves it with ease. Throw to first in time in a one, two, three inning for Kyle Bacchus. Bearcat offense back out there for the top of the eighth inning, needing runs here. And one to tie it, one to, more to go ahead. We head to the top of the eighth here in Hammond, and we'll step aside and take a break for 60 seconds, and we'll be back in a moment on the Bearcat Sports Network.
Hi, I'm Michael Murray with Murray Insurance and Financial Services. Our family agency has been representing the Huntsville and Walker County area since the 1930s. It can help you prepare for your future with your financial planning needs, along with the unexpected with life, health, long-term care, and disability insurance needs. Please give us a call at 1-800-695-LIFE. Our email is mike at murrayservices.net. Eat them up, cat. Hey, Huntsville sports fans, this is Robert Lundeman of Hit Solutions Realty. Hit Solutions serves the real estate needs of the Huntsville area. I would like to introduce you to the newest member of our team, Karen Denman. Hey, y'all, this is Karen Denman. As a lifelong resident of Huntsville, I am passionate about our community. Hit Solutions Realty wants to assist you with finding that piece of property that makes you feel at home. To get the ball rolling, visit us online at hittss.com. Hit Solutions, a proud supporter of the Huntsville Hornets. Welcome back here to Pacaneely Diamond at Alumni Field on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith, top of the eighth, ready to get underway. I think I made a mistake in my counter here. Blake Fature is going to come to the plate here. It's the four, five, and six middle of the order to deal with Cameron Foster, who's been pitching a gem out of the bullpen here for McNeese. Fature will take ball one inside, and we're underway here in the top half of, the, uh, excuse me, the eighth. Junior from Cyprus has had his moments. He started this tournament with a game-tying home run in the loss to, Mick, to Orpus Christi. This is going to be a tough play in the center, but Harden in to make the catch. And there's one out. And now they turn it over to Bryce Holmes. Two pitches, one out here for Cameron Foster. And Fature goes back to the dugout wearing an 0 for 4 collar yet again. It seems the life in his bat has kind of gone away. Bearcats need to pack the bases here, and you know, they got to figure something out here as Holmes comes to the plate. First pitch from Foster is in there, strike one. The 0 1, swing and a miss by Holmes, 0 2. And uh, McKenzie tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Come on, Cats. Backus needs some help. We need some bats. Agreed. Holmes needs to try and put one in play here to continue to extend this inning and hand it off to Clayton Chadwick. And time is called here by the home plate umpire in Glenn Fagan. Looks like one of our fan favorites and Cody Stark made a call in the comments section. <laughs> yeah, he did. Here's the 0-2 to Holmes. Foul tip off the glove, or actually may have been the face mask of Welton. Looks like he's okay. Count remains 0-2. Good job to Cody there, of course, also. Linda McKenzie replying to that one, calling it, of course. And Robert Gilbert also saying, get those bats going, Bearcats. That's what they need right now. And Linda Hampton McKenzie saying, Rogers, we need one of your home runs. That's exactly what needs to happen here. Rogers, next time he comes up, has to try Even, any Bearcat, really. Just yeah. try to smack one over the fence and tie up this ball game. That's the, way, that's the way it is at this point here, running out of opportunities. They have five outs, and Mc, or McNeese is advancing. 0-2, oh, that one's popped up sky high. That's going to stay in play. Over is the first baseman, and he makes the catch and foul ground. The play there by Dickerson, two out. And McNeese is four outs away from the NCAA tournament. Here's Clayton Chadwick. For Chadwick, he's two for three. He's swung a good bat. He's got a single and a double. No home runs on the year. Right now would be a good time to get your first one of the season. Chadwick has done very well in this game to get on base. Now, just need to get on base once again. And like you said, maybe even the perfect time for the freshman to get his first home run on the season. Like I said, the Bearcats have had so many opportunities to tie this up or even take the lead, and they have had a bases loaded. They got left them loaded. They had runners at the corners, and they left them there. There's The opportunity has been there. There's the 0-1 to Chadwick. That one's high ball one. Freshman from Lavernia. Bearcats need a big swing. They're going to have the bottom of the order due up in the top of the ninth. That would be West Foles, Mason Schultz, and Jackson Lofton. Not opportune. If you can get two of them on, it would at least turn things around to the top of the order. J. 
Chadwick awaits the 1 1. Here it is. That one's high, 2 and 1 to Chadwick. No home runs in his career. He started one game in the uh, shortened 2020 season, did Chadwick. Swings at that one, fouls it away, two and two. If the inning continues here, you wonder if Wes Fulce will be in, or do you go to the pinch hitter in Gavin Johnson, who swung a good bat in this series. Got to wonder what the case is going to be. The 2-2 two -two to Chadwick is fouled away again off the net, 2-2. Two and two. And that's a good job from the from the freshman there to try and just keep the at-bat alive. That's the biggest thing right now, is just keeping the at-bat alive. Noah Spiegel saying need to follow the lead of the football team and come up clutch. Come on, guys. You're absolutely right. 2-2 two -two to Chadwick. Fouled away again. Just split the uprights and good through the lights. Of course, the Bearcats winning the national championship on the football side of things. 23 to 21 over the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. Up in Frisco, Texas, just a couple of weeks ago, we were up there on the call on 90.5 KSHU for that one. Our colleagues Rob Hibb and Brian Adams getting the call that one here on KSAM. 2 2 again to Clayton Chadwick. Ball three outside. Woo hoo hoo. Another gutsy take. And Very gutsy take there from the freshman there outside. A good job by Chadwick, and now he has given himself the prime opportunity here with a 3-2. Full count offering the catcher in full on deck. Here's the 3-2. Ball four and a walk to Chadwick. So you got to wonder, do you go to Fulce, who's had a rough night, or do you go to Gavin Johnson? And indeed, it is a switch. Uh, yes, there will be, in fact, a switch now. Was supposed to be Mason Schultz, and now it'll be Gavin Johnson. West Foles. West Foles was next. It is Gavin Johnson that's coming to the plate. Mm. I guess they started messing with names on the scoreboard, but yeah. Pinch hit here is Gavin Johnson, because now he slides in behind the plate as well defensively. And he's a very good defensive catcher as well. Did a lot in the game against Abilene Christian to get the Bearcats here, and he swung a good bat. Batting 316, hits well with runners on, and with two out. He represents the go-ahead run. Pinch hitting Johnson, Foster out of the stretch, ball one to Johnson. Of course, you got Schultz on deck, you know he can swing a good bat too. Johnson on the year, he's got one home run to his credit. A home run here would give the Bearcats the lead. Here's the 1 0 to Johnson. That one's low again, 2 0. Gotta wonder. Is the gas running out for Cameron Foster? If you're the Bearcats, you're hoping so. Time is called here, and manager's gonna come out and take a deep look at the bullpen there. Again, just maybe trying to buy a little bit more time before they maybe make a call to the bullpen. I think right now they're just trying to get a gauge here and see what's going on. He looked out to the bullpen first thing when he talked to his guy. I think just trying to get a gauge here and see where his head is and see whether or not he can get this last out. I think he's going to stay in here for this one. I think right now they're just buying time, and yeah, there it is. Manager's going to walk back to the dugout like I figured he would in Justin Hill, the eighth-year coach for McNeese. Just trying to buy time for the bullpen for one and two. Trying to make sure his guy is good and up and ready. But trying to get this out. Meanwhile, for the Bearcats, they need to get a runner in scoring position. At this point, you just need you need a bases clearing double into the gap yeah. to tie up the ball game. Johnson swings at that one, fouls it away, two and one. Couldn't tell I'm making a call here in this at bat. Yeah. <laughs> Anything down the lines or the gaps should be deep enough for Chadwick to score the speed he has over there. Can the Bearcats get a bit, capitalize here on an opportunity or will it be the tail of the tape it's been all night? The 2-1 to Johnson. Swung on, base hit in the left field. That'll keep the inning going here for Mason Schultz. It's two on, two out. And now the biggest at bat in the young life of Mason Schultz is gonna come to the plate. 
I tell you what, that's what you want right here. Good job by Johnson. Getting on base in the pinch hit situation, coming in cold because he hasn't been to the plate yet in this game. He was in last game, so he still had a little bit. He was still worked up a little bit from that one. So it helped him a little bit, and a perfect spot here. Now, go ahead, run on first base. Tying run in scoring position. You have to get that tying run in. You do. This is the best chance to do it. With two out, runners at second and first. Schultz takes strike one. Third straight inning, or I should say fourth straight inning. The Bearcats have brought a runner into scoring position. On the sixth hit of the game by Gavin Johnson on a pinch hit. 0-1 oh, the count. Cameron Foster working out of the stretch. Here's the 0-1. Schultz swings 0-2. And, and a foul ball to the left field side. Now you got to wonder, what is he thinking? Anything close. Looking at Schultz. In the first at-bat of his collegiate career, he hit a home run over the right field wall at Don Sanders. A base hit here, would I think, would trump that, and it would bring Chadwick home, and we have a tie game going to the bottom half. The 0-2. High ball one. <sighs> Hold your breath on that one. That looked close. Schultz now trying to settle in here. One, two coming here from Cameron Foster. Called strike three. That's the pitch you need to swing. Cameron Foster nails the pitch of a lifetime and we go to the bottom of the eighth. It's two to one. We'll see if Kyle Backus returns to try and shut it down one more time. We'll step aside and take a break. We'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcat Sports Network. Whenever someone mentions their hometown, I think we all have memories that rise to the surface. Maybe it brings to mind the faces of those who made your life special. Hello, I'm Greg Smith with Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home. Special lives are important to us too. For almost 20 years, Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home has served Walker County families, and we pride ourselves on the commitment we have to caring for you and your loved one in a way that honors them the best. We're Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home because everyone deserves to be remembered. Whether it's uphill or down, Bill Fick Ford has the vehicle whatever your adventure. Needing to tow a load or just more room for the family? Either way, Bill Fick Ford has you covered with the best selection of fuel-efficient Ford SUVs and crossovers, including the 2021 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. There's also the 2021 Ford Rangers, ready for the toughest adventures on road or off. Hurry in today to Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville, or shop online at BillFickFordHuntsville.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Pacanelli Diamond at Alumni Field on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside of Jordan Smith, bottom of the eighth, ready to get underway here in the Southland Conference Championship game. Here on 101.7 KSAM, powered by KSAM Sports and the Bearcat Sports Network, Kyle Backus out for another inning of work. He needs three outs to give his offense one shot. Well, three shots, if you will. Three outs to work with. McNeese, three outs away right now. From going to the NCAA tournament, they're looking for insurance here in the bottom of the eighth. Reed Bork at the plate. Bork tonight, he is 0 for 2. He grounded into a three unassisted his last time up. Struck out to Rogers back in the second. Backus, 84 pitches. Needs to shut it down here. First pitch to Bork, cut on and missed. 0 and 1. Here's the 0-1. That one bounces out of the glove of Gavin Johnson. The new catcher now in for West Foles. One and one the count. You gotta wonder, there's been arms up in the pen for McNeese if they're gonna go to their closer after Cameron Foster's performance. Reed Bork swings and hits a high fly ball into left field. Chadwick into his, into his right side. He'll make the catch, one away. That'll turn things over to the nine hole hitter now in Cade Morris, who on the night he has a hit on a rather weakly hit ball in front and got by Kyle Backus. Not a hit actually, it was an error on Backus, so he's 0 for 2. Struck out looking his very first time up in the third. Backus, four strikeouts in seven and in the third innings. 
Swings and misses at that one. Does Morris O for one in the counter as looking at Backus here. In seven and a third innings of work now. This is his career long in his career that the longest he has gone in a ball game. The you know, one to Morris. That one in there, strike two. And here's the thing with him right now. You take a look at what he's doing. He just threw 93 miles an hour. He's seven and a third innings way th of the way through at around 90 pitches. Wow. You know, two to Morris. That one's high ball one. To set the stage for you for the top of the ninth inning, if the Bearcats can set McNeese down here in order, it's going to be the 9-1 and 2, likely a pinch hitter for Jackson Lofton potentially, and then it's Anthony McKenzie, and then it comes down to Colton Kowser. 1-2, cut on a missed, two away. Fifth strikeout for Kyle Backus. Like I said, he's done his job. Came in here and he has shut it down. The only blemish is that two-run shot given up, by, given up to Clayton Raspberry. That is it. That is really it. The Bearcats offensively have not been able to back him up, and if that's the way it stands here tonight, that's the difference. Top of the order now, Peyton Harden. He's one for, th one for three. Reach on an error and ground it out. We'll take ball one outside. Here's the one one. 1 0 to Harden. Now it's the 1 and 1 as he fouls it back. Okay, Harden on the year. He has struck out 58 times, a considerable amount. That is good for second on the team in, in this lineup, at least in strikeouts. Bearcats down by 1. 2 to 1, McNeese. He'll take ball 2 inside, does Harden. Now, if I'm back as here, I don't want to walk Harden, and then you have to face Raspberry. I'd rather have Lance Lusk face him if the Bearcats can rally in the top of the ninth inning. Fouled away there by Harden, two and two. Again, the Bearcats are going to have the nine, one, and two in the top half of the ninth inning. Their season on the line. Two, two count here on Harden. And the pitch from Backus. High ball three. Just missed the zone with that one. Aiden Harden here. Again, one for three. Had a single his last time up. Back is his payoff pitch. Swung on a missed. He got him. And here we go. The season on the line as we head to the top of the ninth. Jackson Lofton, Anthony McKenzie, and Colton Kowser. Winner. Would go to the South, uh, would take the Southland Conference Championship if McNeese hangs on. The Bearcats, they're hoping to spoil that. We'll be back here in a moment on the Bearcat Sports Network. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it has to be El Gordo Taqueria. You'll experience the absolute best real Mexican food. El Gordo Taqueria has plates. Also, check out their new desk. Dine in or carry out, now available. Delivery to you from DoorDash and Grubhub. Open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And now open Sunday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. For the absolute best authentic Mexican food in Huntsville, it's El Gordo Taqueria. Call us at 295-TACO. That's 295-8226. Try it once and you'll be hooked. El Gordo Taqueria. COVID-19 rapid testing is now available at Texpress Urgent Care in Huntsville. No symptoms are needed. Now you can get tested even faster and get your results back faster too. Not sure which test is right for you? Texpress Urgent Care is happy to help. For more details, call 936-570-2626. No appointments are needed. Walk-ins only. Texpress Urgent Care Clinic, located at 193 I-45 South. Check their website at TexpressUrgentCare.com and visit them on Facebook. That's Texpress Urgent Care next to Sports Clips in Huntsville. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have a pinch hitter here to start the top of the ninth. It's Easton Lloyd here in Hammond, Louisiana. Bearcats down to their final three outs of their season. McNeese hangs on. They advance to the NCAA tournament with the Southland Conference's automatic bid. If the Bearcats are able to string across two runs, they take the lead for the first time tonight. A one run ties it, and we play further. Here is Easton Lloyd. He has a home run in this series. And the pitch. 
Lloyd swings at the first pitch and fouls it away out of play on one. We're going to stand up for this one, folks. This is, uh, this is it right here. The script is there. Who is going to write it? The 0-1 to Lloyd. Swung on and on the infield. Going to be a tough play for the shortstop. Lloyd trying to work it out, but there's one out. And McNeese is two outs away. A good effort there by Lloyd to try and beat it out. Just couldn't quite get there on a little bloop grounder. Yeah, if that was maybe about a half a mile an hour slower, and maybe had another bounce in it, it would have been safe. But just unfortunate timing there. And a good throw there by the shortstop. Here's Anthony McKenzie, top of the order for the Bearcats. McKenzie tonight, he is 0 for 3. Grounded into the fielder's choice, and he's been struck out looking twice. He'll take strike one there from Foster. And give a call to Cameron Foster. He's done an incredible job. He absolutely has. Four pitches, in, four innings in relief, excuse me. Only given up two hits, and he struck out three. Incredible job for him so far. The you know, one to McKenzie, fouled away 0-2. Colton Kowser, the long hero for the Bearcats, waits on deck. If McKenzie can reach, it would be huge. That's it. Exactly to hear you want at the plate. And what could be his final collegiate game? Swung on a miss there, Mike McKenzie. He is going to run down the first two out. McNeese one out away. And it'll ride on the bat of Colton Kowser, who obviously could be potentially playing in his final collegiate at bat, prepping for the MLB draft, but projected top 10 pick. And the biggest at bat of his collegiate career is right here. This at bat could decide whether or not he's on the top 10 of the draft. Gets an out, probably drops out. Gets a hit. He's not only the hero for the Bearcats, as that one's fouled away for strike one. That thing shoots him up probably in the top five. Yeah. The script is there. Ken Kowser write it? Especially with Rodgers on deck, if the inning can continue. He's got an 0-1 count on him. Here's the 0-1. Ball one low. This McNeese crowd ready to explode. And give them credit, they have fought hard. Very, very hard. Blowing their way through this tournament. The 1-1 one, one to Kowser. Outside, 2-1. Second one Kowser waiting for his pitch. Two one to Fox to uh, Colton Kowser from Foster in their strike two. Bearcats down to their final strike. Kowser potentially his final pitch he'll see on a collegiate field. The two two from Foster fouled away. Like I said, the Bearcats had several opportunities. They have been, they have out hit McNeese six to three. The run category a little different. A lot of what ifs are gonna be asked into this off season if this ends right here. The two two again to Kowser. Swung on, hitting the air to left field and McNeese is off to the NCAA tournament. The McNeese Cowboys the 2021 Southland Conference Champion. McNeese Cowboys win this one 2-1 to one over the Bearcats of Sam Houston and McNeese have won the Southland Conference Championship. They advance to the NCAA Tournament Regionals and a big credit to them as well. What a season they have had. They go perfect. 
in the Southland Conference Tournament. We're going to step aside and take a quick break. We'll be back here to wrap things up here from Hammond, Louisiana. Again, your final. Big Nice wins this one. Two to one. We'll be back here on the Bearcat Sports Network. This is Tim Rushing with Charlie's Used Cars. As most of you have seen or know, we are being affected by the I-45 freeway expansion. I assure you we are open and ready to serve you with your next vehicle purchase. We have driveway access off the I-45 feeder road as well as easy access off of Normal Park Drive. Charlie's Used Cars has been serving the area for 48 years and offers quality pre-owned vehicles and superior customer service. I encourage you to stop by and see us at 230 I-45 South here in Huntsville or visit us online at Charlie's Used Cars. Com. On the campus of Sam Houston State University is the historical University Hotel. It's a heartbeat away from the campus center, Bauer Stadium, the Don Sanders Baseball Stadium, and the Sam Houston Memorial Museum. Dignitaries from all walks of life have been here. Let the hotel host your special events like graduation, holiday parties, or professional gatherings. Come stay. Come visit. Come see the University Hotel at Sam Houston State University. shsuhotel.org. Welcome back here, ladies and gentlemen, to Pacanelli Diamond here in Hammond, Louisiana, and the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. Your final here tonight, McNeese wins this one two to one. So the Bearcats had several, and I mean several, opportunities to try and make this a ball game. They did throughout. Kyle Backus did his job, win a full eight innings to try and support his Bearcats. The only blemish was the difference. The two-run shot from Clayton Raspberry in the right field, and that was it. Otherwise, Backus just pitched the game of his lifetime and what is likely going to be his last collegiate time on the mound. Hats off to McNeese. They played a heck of a ball game. They go perfect here in the Southland Conference Tournament. Working their way through the winner's bracket all the way on the Louisiana side, taking down Southeastern last night, 18-2, and then beating the Bearcats here today, 2-1. to one. The Bearcats hung in there, Jordan. They really did just... It's a question of so many missed opportunities. It really was. They left a lot, a lot of runners on base. You take a look at the final number. Two Ten. for McNeese. Ten. Ten for Sam Houston. And that right there is the difference in the ballgame. So many players left on base at second. At third, in scoring position, what have you, no matter what the situation, especially on two outs, so many players left in scoring in, in scoring situation on second and third base just could not get the runner home. Just couldn't do it. And a tough break for Colton Kowser, too. He represented the final out in this one in what is likely to end his collegiate career and for the Bearcats that wraps up their Southland Conference career and after 34 years in the Southland Conference as they're going to get ready to give awards out here for all tournament and of course the championship trophy to McNeese. McNeese of course they're hanging around here in the Southland and Southland's got a bright future on this side of the things. You wonder, with these teams moving, you think there's gonna be a big problem there? No, this, this conference still has a, quite a bright future. These Louisiana teams and the Texas teams, that will remain, plus whoever gets called up to, South, to the Southland Conference, they've got so much going for them for the Bearcats. Now you take a turn and you look to the future. You lose Colton Kowser more than likely after this game. Arguably top 10 to go in the MLB draft, if not top 15. Absolutely. You look at the rest of this roster. You got guys coming back potentially if they don't get drafted too. Jack Rogers, he'll be back. Blake Facher, who had a heck of a tournament. Four home runs in this tournament. Anthony McKenzie, this, there's so much freshman, there's so much young blood in this lineup for the Bearcats. As the McNeese Cowboys, they celebrate down there at home play. They hold up the trophy, a hat goes flying and give a credit to Justin Hill. A former Bearcat assistant, former Bearcat pitching coach, going up against another former Bearcat pitching coach in Jay Sirianni. Give him credit, the LSU grad. Here in his home state, and they get it done here tonight in Hammond. Two to one, the final. Jordan, final thoughts before we sign off for the evening. We said it at the beginning of the broadcast. 
We honestly did not think, at least for me, I don't know about you, but I know for me, and I will go on the record as saying this, I did not feel like this Bearcat team was strong enough to get to the conference championship game. I thought they were going to run into issues with opposing pitching, and it was just going to be too much for their offense, and they were going to be out within the first three or so games. And especially the way things had trended over the last few years, it just, it didn't seem like anything had really shown me. Yes, they had a good weekend against Nichols to end the year, to get them into the conference the conference tournament itself. Completely shocked everyone. Shocked me. A very, very good job by Sam Houston, especially after losing the very first game in walk-off fashion, coming back and and, and fighting and keeping, keep going at it, scoring double-digit runs every single game in the elimination bracket, keeping your season alive, and getting yourself to the championship game, that speaks volumes to the kind of character this team has. And I think you're definitely going to lose a lot of that as Colton Kowser gets his postseason award and like, wiping away a few tears as he knows that he is done at Sam Houston. Yeah. What a ride it's been for him. From Cypress Ranch High School down in Houston, right here to Sam Houston, plays incredible baseball all the way through. And now he's off to do bigger and bigger things. Work his way up way through the minors, and don't get me wrong, give it about maybe two years. You're going to see this man in a Major League Baseball uniform, and he's going to do incredible things like many Bearcats before him. Ryan O'Hearn is one that comes to mind now, a player for the Kansas City Royals. As McNeese continues to do their celebration, Lance Lusk will get a postseason award. Jack Rogers with another one as well. He'll continue to hey, hand Harden them out. The oh, man, a heartbreaker here tonight for the Bearcats. Two to one. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. What a ride it's been for them. They have played six games here in the conference tournament and fall just short of the NCAA tournament. Tom Waddell saying in our chat, Super Season and the Cats are young. You're absolutely right. Again, this marks the end of the Bearcats run in the Southland Conference. In July 1st, 2021, the Bearcats will advance on into the Western Athletic Conference. As Clayton Raspberry, he'll get some celebration here. The MVP of the conference tournament. Because that's going to start to wrap things up here for us, folks. Like I said, the Bearcats off to the Western Athletic Conference along with Stephen F. Austin, Abilene Christian, and Lamar to have a great run through that conference and to begin a new era for Sam Houston Athletics. Didn't get really an update from golf today. We'll see if they're still advancing. If not, that wraps up everything for the Bearcats in the Southland Conference. Let's go ahead and give that to you right now, actually, while we're still here and rocking out and getting everything going here. Let me open this up here right quick. Open this one up as well. It looks like from the initial glance, the Bearcats have dropped a little bit. Yes, they have. They went from second, second on the team leaderboard at negative two, or two under par, I should say, to finishing through day two and round two and finishing the tournament. It looks like, I believe it's only a two round tournament. Or no, there's still a few more days here, but they currently sit seventh place at 10 over par. So obviously not a great second day on the course here. And then as well, dropping into the individual, Will Holcomb, one over par today, dropping down as the lead Bearcat. Tied for seventh in 10th place on the leaderboard. From what I read, you had to be in the top eight to keep going, so the Bearcats look like they are going to still be going on to the third round. So not quite done are the men, on the men's golf side of things, but in terms of stick and ball sports, this is it for the Bearcats. They'll now go join, as I said, the Western Athletic Conference starting on July 1st, 2021, marking their end of their 34-year run in the Southland Conference. End of an era here tonight in Hammond, Louisiana. And that is going to do it here for us here on 1017 KSAM Digital and on the FM Airwaves. Uh, the case, powered by KSAM Sports and the Bearcat. 
Sports Network. Want to thank my colleague here, Jordan Smith, been along with me for the whole ride, the whole week here. Got in here on Tuesday. <laughs> Thought we were leaving Thursday. Nope, we got to be here all the way to the title game here tonight. On a beautiful Saturday night in Hammond, Louisiana. I want to again uh, give a huge thank you to the folks at Southeastern Louisiana University. They've been tremendous hosts for us in this tournament. First time they have hosted, and if, if they, not their first time, it's been quite a while. Big thank you to them. A big thank you to Josh Jonas at the Southland Conference. He's been a big help for us as well, getting us game notes, getting us what we need, and just being very good accommodating hosts for us as well here in the Southland Conference. Big thank you to Josh. Big thank you to our SID, Ben Reichert. He's been with us the whole way as well. Also, big shout-outs to our other SIDs and Jason Barfield and Cody Stark for all what they've done here for KSAM Sports this year. We saw a national champion in the football side of things. Basketball, they ran really well as well. Baseball here tonight just falling just short. An incredible season for Sam Houston Athletics, and we are ready for another one to kick off in the fall. Now to give thank yous once again to our board op producer today, Nathan Williams. You've been legging it out the whole way with us as the, <laughs> as the bell won't toll across the street at St. Paul Lutheran Church. It is 9 o'clock here in southeastern Louisiana. And a big thank you to Nathan Williams as well. He's been a huge help to us as well. Thank you to Rob Hip, our sports director, for the incredible season he has had here on the broadcasting side of things. And we wish you uh, better feelings, buddy, and we know you're not feeling too well. We hope you feel better as this uh, week's to come. We hope to see you very soon as well. Steve Ricks, our general manager, or excuse me, our operations manager, and to Dave Donahue, our general manager over at KSAM. Thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity to bring these sports to you being here all week long. We thank you so much as well. And one more time, from Hammond, Louisiana, from my broadcast partner, Jordan Smith, my name is Carlos Zimmerman saying so long one more time from Hammond, Louisiana. Your final once again, the McNeese Cowboys are off to the NCAA tournament. They are the Southland Conference Baseball Tournament champions here tonight in a 2-1 victory over your Bearcats of Sam Houston. Have a good rest of your weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great Sunday tomorrow. Good night. God bless. And, have all, and as always, folks, have a pleasant tomorrow, and we will see you next time here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Good night one more time from Hammond. This is Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Communication is key to winning any game. Just as Sam Houston wins on the gridiron, I help you win in the real estate market. As an expert in today's competitive market, I can help you make a successful offer on a property and sell your home for top dollar. When you support this local realtor, you support an entire family and a proud Bearcat. I'm Zachary Beebe with Abbey Realty. Visit my website at HuntsvilleTXRealEstate.com. Eat them up, cats. Advantage Specialties is your one-stop shop for business promotional needs in Huntsville. Need a logo on a shirt, hat, or other piece of clothing? Advantage Specialties provides embroidery in-house. Embroidery in-house helps make the process fast and affordable. What about promotional products, banners, signs? Advantage Specialties can help put your name on virtually anything. For custom in-house embroidery, promotional products, printing, and much more, check out AdvantageSpecialties.com. That's AdvantageSpecialties.com. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Wiesner Hyundai to get a real deal? And during Wiesner's Stars and Strikes sale, save even more. How about a 2021 Hyundai Elantra Limited, 4000 off MSRP? Get a 2021 Hyundai Kona Limited or a Tucson Limited, your choice, 5000 off MSRP. Or a 2021 Hyundai Sonata Limited, 5000 off MSRP. Buy for less at Wiesner Hyundai. Exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe or WiesnerHyundai.com. Check out America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty and the Hyundai Assurance Program today. Hey. Hey, Huntsville sports fans, this is Robert Lindemann of Hit Solutions Player Development, helping instruct the stars to shine. Hit Solutions Player Development teaches the fundamentals of baseball and softball with proven offensive and defensive strategies and techniques. We instruct and inspire each player to be the best they can be by teaching the mental side of the game. To have the confidence to bring in the game-winning hit, visit us online at hitts.com. Hit Solutions, a proud supporter of the Huntsville Hornets. Thanks for listening and supporting Sam Houston Athletics. Sam Houston Bearcat Baseball is presented by HEH Communications in partnership with Sam Houston Athletics. No portion of this program may be reproduced or distributed without the expressed written consent of HEH Communications and or Sam Houston State University Athletics. On behalf of our